All right, Scum and Villainy, please welcome Kevin Smith and Mark Bernardin, Fat Man Beyond. Welcome to Fat Man Beyond. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Mark Bernardi. Hey! Look who dropped into the gig, man. How are you? I'm awesome. Good. Whatever. I mean, I'm great. It's all the show we got for you, kids. <laughs> yeah. We didn't really prepare, man. Uh, thanks for being here. We are at the world-famous Scum and Villainy Cantina in Hollywood, on Hollywood Boulevard. Put your fucking mitts together so the folks at home know you're real. <laughs> Oh, they're real, all right. Kids, uh, I don't know what it's like in the rest of the world, but in California, and particularly in this neck of the woods, it is fucking hot. It's supposed to be hot all weekend long. Oh. Yeah, like really bad. Today it was up to like 90 in the valley or something like that. And I know that because today I closed on my new home in Studio City, man. Woo! It's like we're neighbors. We're going to be fucking close. Oh, it's um, going to be great. After well, I've been in that house 21 years up in the Hollywood Hills, uh, we bought a new house in Studio City, and today we got the keys, and, and me and my wife, for the fourth time in our lives together, uh, moved into a new house. We're moving everything on like Thursday and Friday, but we got the keys today, and we took the dogs to the house and fucking walked around the house and... and then my wife was like, should we do this? I was like, it's fucking done. Like, there's no, the should conversation should have happened a while ago. Um, yeah, man, it's strange. Strange and wonderful, a new adventure. Uh, years and years ago, when we were making Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, we lived in Toluca Lake. We rented a house there because I was still living in New Jersey. And back then, I was so, like, anti-California. I was like, I never live in fucking Los Angeles. All the people are fucking fake and shit like that. <laughs> And so I was like, Jersey forever, fucking Hollywood never. And after, you know, 11 months of living anywhere, you live in fucking Calcutta for 11 months, it becomes fucking home and shit. So after 11 months of living in Toluca Lake, I was like, you know what, man? I could fucking do this. I can get my head around living here. I remember I was walking Harley in a stroller. She was still like really, really young. And there was a house, a small house that was for sale and it had like those pamphlets sitting in a box in front of the house. And so I grabbed one, and I was looking at it. I was like, oh, you know, I fucking, maybe I could live out here, man. Everyone's, they may be fake nice, but at least it's nice. Like, fucking, I'll, I'll take that shit. And I went back to Jennifer, and I was like, you know, like, I think I could get my head around living here finally. I was like, I think there's this house for sale, like, around the block in Toluca Lake. And my wife is like, the valley? Oh, God, no. Only old people live in the valley. <laughs> Well, I'm old now, man, <laughs> and so is she, because now we fucking live in the valley. So, Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's, uh, the thing I discovered today is y'all keep it hot over there. Fuck, man. It's way hotter in the valley than it is over here. Yeah, but it's still temperate. It hasn't hit 115 yet in the valley. You're saying it's going to get worse? Uh-huh. Fuck. Sorry. I picked the wrong time to move. Yeah, and stop smoking weed. <laughs> yeah, that's true, man. What is today, Monday or Tuesday? Monday. Today is... And Where are all of you people? Like, <laughs> it's an easy question, and it was 50-50 in this house. Today is 23 weeks that I haven't smoked weed. Um, <laughs> don't applaud that. Life is colorless and horrible. I'm so fucking sober I moved to the valley, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> Uh, but yes, more as it unfolds and whatnot. And once we're in and everything's been moved over, I'll have you over. Of course, I'll have you over. You fucks know. But again, I will be broadcasting from there uh, when we do home shows and stuff. If you've watched Fat Man Beyond from uh, home recently, you, you, you keep seeing the background behind me get more and more Spartan as things get packed mm. and moved away. The house I'm moving into, the previous owner was a real gearhead. So like... It's a the garage is massive, um, and it was for like cars and motorcycles. But I, I'll never park in there, so I'm gonna make that my office, particularly because it looks like Tony Stark's garage. 
This is one of the selling points of the house. I walked in. The house was wonderful, but I walked in the garage. I was like, this fucking looks like Tony Stark's garage. We'll take it. So I'll be broadcasting from that place. Bam. Banff man, everybody, give it up for JC. I th I think your housewarming gift, if everybody wants to pitch in, should be a suit of Iron Man armor that you can put in your garage. Done and done. Right? I got enough space, man. Like the it's the the house that I live in now has giant walls. That was one of the things I always had going for it: high ceilings, and giant walls. And we've got this uh, painting of Harley that Gottfried Helmlein did like years ago when, when, Har when we first moved to California. So the portrait's like 22 years old, 21, 22 years old. And it's big. It's taller than me and fucking way wider than me. It's like wider than us together. With, it, it's about, I want to say like eight by fucking six or something like that. Giant panel close up of the kid's face that when you look at it, it looks like a giant blown up photo. But when you get close, you actually see the brush strokes. It's pretty impressive and stuff. So for years, it sat like in the foyer of the house. The moment you walk into the house, it's there to the right, which was always across from Harley's room. And Harley hated it her whole fucking life because, <laughs> you know, she'd open the door and she'd be like, Jesus Christ. And it's staring there. And when she, you know, started bringing friends home, her friends would be like, oh, she'd be like, don't fucking look at it and shit like that. <laughs> And so we torture her all the time. We're like, when we die, it's yours. And she's like, I'm going to burn it. I was like, fucking no, you won't. It belongs in a museum and shit. So fuck her. We might donate it to a museum. But I, the room, the house that we got, the, we don't have as high ceilings as we currently do. But in fucking the Tony Stark's garage, the ceiling's fucking massive. So that's where the thing's going to go. So it'll now, her giant portrait will hang like in my office. She came over yesterday to see the house as well. And Are I you told gonna get her, a big I was robot like, arm? yes, fucking I mean, yes. I'm going to get a robot that I could talk to, call him dummy and shit like that. <laughs> I call him Jason Muse. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, it's crazy. It's cra this is the first time that me and Jennifer will be living alone in our entire relationship. Like when we first got together, Brian Johnson lived with us. Jason Muse lived with us. Then Harley fucking lived with us because they wouldn't let us put Harley someplace else and shit. <laughs> Um, Harley came along with Jen's parents, Byron and Gail, who've always fucking lived with us and stuff. So this house is the first time we're like actually by ourselves, um, which means we'll probably get divorced in three months or something <laughs> like that. Uh, but yeah, man, fucking weird. Big steps. Growing up, Mark, at age 52. <laughs> I look forward to the texts like, hey, man, uh, what are you doing? Do you want to come over and play video games? No, my, it's going to be like, hey, man, do you want to live with me and my wife? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird being alone here. It's like, I mean, we're, it's not like a real thruple. It's just we're yeah. trying it out. We just need a third, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Somebody in the house make a noise while we fuck. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's what it comes down to. <laughs> Never really thought about that, but that's what I need, man. Some background noise just so I can fucking get it thunder. on. thunder. <laughs> totally. Oh my God, it's going to be creepy when we're fucking and all I can hear is her. <laughs> gonna have to white noise. I'm going to have to make some noise for the first time because I'm a very quiet fuck. Just get like a podcast going in the other room like far away. That's true. I hadn't thought about what a podcast will sound like in that giant garage. It's going to sound very echoey probably. Um, the internet's going to love it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, fucking internet, man. The internet has been, like, attributing a bunch of things I didn't say to me for the last, like, two fucking weeks. And I keep reading articles about, like, Kevin Smith. Said, There's an article going around where they were like, Michael Uslan uh, debunks Kevin Smith's lie about Batman Beyond. Because I remember I said, mm -hmm. like, uh, his son David at the premiere was like, Dad, you know, is waiting to find out the news because he said, like, fucking if Flash does the business that the Batman did... They're talking about doing Batman Beyond. So I literally reiterated that here, same way as I'm doing right now. And then uh, there was a bunch of articles where I guess Michael Uslan was like, I didn't say that. And so a bunch of people were like, Kevin Smith is a fucking liar. I was like, well, then David Uslan is a fucking liar because his kid literally told me that. So on this show, I'm not saying shit, although I just did. So fucking <laughs> gives him a chance to run that article uh, over it's again. A, it's a cruel game, my friend. It really is. That's How are you? What have you been up to? I've been walking the fucking picket line, man. We're still on strike. <laughs> Still happening. Yeah. Union power! Fight and the it, power, my friend. It could be union's power. Sounds like any second now. Yeah, last, when was last week or a week and a half ago, 
Uh, the nanny was out there. She's the head of the of SAG. <laughs> Fran Drescher. And she was yes. like, ah. But um, she was saying, like, oh, shit's going well, and we're probably going to settle, or, what, or talks are going well. Mm. But now this week, the word is that, like, SAG has been making blank signs. And yeah. There's getting the, ready to join the, the fight. The propaganda begins, and all the images of a bunch of very attractive actors stapling signs together. Uh, it's yeah, that's the thing that SAG will have over the Writers Guild, man. The Writers Guild strike looks like us. Yeah. Fucking, and people could drive past that shit and whatnot, but the SAG strike is going to look like fucking Jennifer Lawrence, yeah. fucking Ryan Gosling and shit like that. Like, I was out there today, and we were all like, well, this is the last week. We will be the most attractive people on the picture. <laughs> yes. <line." laughs> To say the fucking least. Um, Speaking of Ryan Gosling, we'll go back to the strike, but have you seen the fucking Barbie trailer? I mean, the trailer, but the not just that, but there's a new fucking like clip out mm -hmm. where, you know, he's, uh, he talks about like, he's like, my job, I'm not really a lifeguard. My job is just beach. <laughs> it's fucking, he is fucking hysterical. And then I saw some early reactions to Barbie. I guess they had a premiere, yet another thing that we weren't invited to and whatnot. I mean, I get it, but also... I don't know, man. I, if I was a fucking any studio, I would invite me to everything because, like, I fucking love everything and shit. I understand not inviting you. No, I should not be invited to Barbie. <laughs> no, but me, I'm always like, oh, my God, it's the best thing ever. Oh, my God, that's the best thing ever. But we didn't get invited to this fucking thing either. But a bunch of early reactions from it, people are going, like, Ryan Gosling will probably get an Oscar nomination for playing fucking Ken, bitch. <laughs> And I'm here for it. I ain't fighting it at all. I think he's funny, man. Whenever he's on SNL, he's a legit funny fucking dude. This motherfucker's been acting since he was like fucking sperm, man. Because he was, he was on the Mickey Mouse Which way play. out? <laughs> yes. Get out of here. The most entertaining sperm in the bunch. But he has been fucking acting for, for like a dog's age at this point, man. So I'm not surprised that he steals the fucking show. In any event, see that clip online. It's, I'll show you after the show. It's fucking I mean, hysterical. he might be good, but comedians never win Oscars. Almost. Is that right? Kevin Klein is one of maybe three people who's won. Definitely the most recent person who won an Oscar for a performance in a comedy. And I don't know that anybody considers Kevin Klein a comedian, right? But it was Fish Called Wanda. Right. So, like, I get it. But even still, like, it just, it's, it's historically under-recognized by the Academy. Mr. Phoebe Cates. Yes. Isn't that wild? <laughs> Mr. Fish Odor from Bob's Burgers. Is that right? That's yeah. really? That's He's the really voice? Is. That's what he does now. Like, he literally all he does is voice work, and I think it's mostly Bob's Burgers. Really? And he just doesn't do on camera stuff anymore. What's that all about? I think it's because he wanted to raise his kids and then just got used to it and said, like, well, fuck it. He did like a this. Rick Moranis, where yeah. he's just like, you know what's more important than this? Anything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, back to the strike. So yeah, what's it strike. been like? So, so the, the, the picket lines have been, I mean, they continue to be kind of wonderful. I mean, it's, the spirit is strong, even if the bodies are weak, and it's getting fucking hot in the valley and lots of studios in the valley. A lot of reunions. I saw the entire Bones crew showed up for one of the pickets. Yeah, I know, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's, that's how they've kept the spirits up. All of these themed pickets like today was sci-fi writers at Universal, and so I went out there, because I'm a nerd, and it was like a fucking hundred nerds walking back and forth across City Walk, and people I worked with on Picard, people who worked on other stuff, like, you, you created v, v, didn't you? Nice, welcome aboard. Um, but it's always lovely to, A, meet people you worked with before, meet people you're fans of, just find people with common interests. I mean, that's so much of making a living as a writer in Hollywood is about finding your tribe, mm. and finding people who, who also want to do what you do, also are trying just as hard to get it done. That can be support, that can be feedback, that can be just fucking rallying buddies. And that's very much what the strike has been, is people connecting across all of those things. And writers are like solitary by nature. So to be on a picket line with 100 other people who do the same thing and like the same shit is kind of great for people who are historically introverted and like caves to live in. I got to imagine too that like a bunch of writers like being forced to be together under these conditions will result in a bunch of fucking shows. Like once everybody goes back to work, mm -hmm. it's going to be like pitchgasm because fucking <laughs> all these fucking writers have been like, imagine if, what if? Yeah. For okay, like that's last great, but, but what if this too? Yeah, yeah. I think it's lots of people, you know, the casual networking of it all, which is like, hey, you're cool, I'm cool, I might have a show in six months. I remember you from the picket line. Let's fucking have lunch and see what's what. 
I think lots of that will start to happen. Lots of ideas will be born. And lots of fucking rows will begin rowing in the same direction again. And that's amazing. Fucking A, man. And if the actors show up, we can all take a week off and let them, because the cameras will be there, because fuck it, it's... That's know. true. All the news will show up to yeah, be like, holy fuck. Sigourney Weavers at Fox. Yeah. Fuck, fuck, fuck you, alien. Stop bursting out of my chest, studios. <laughs> It'll be a lot to that. That was funnier than you fuckers get. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say. <laughs> Um, that's right. Like Meryl Streep will show up to a picket in New York. Yeah. Oh, is that right? I think she's a New York cat. Do they pick it in New York? Is that going on? They do, but it's it's smaller because there's not that many production locations, and so walking back and forth around the HBO offices is just like walking in front of the sidewalk. You're not stopping anything from happening. You're just showing force, I suppose. I was gonna pick it in front of my movie theater, but then I was like, eh. <laughs> And be the one guy, everyone's like, what are you doing, buddy? I was like, I'm fucking striking. They're like, about what? I'm like, well, I should get paid more to write. They're like, F- you know what I do for a living? Fuck you. <laughs> you make pretend fuck. Um, <laughs> I was uh, uh, at the theater um, last, was it last weekend? We did uh, Bear is Driving, the Clerks cartoon marathon mm-hmm. with Brian O'Hollery came out and Jeff Anderson. And the Clerks cartoon, we like did six episodes of like 21 years ago, 20, maybe 22 years ago at this point. Jesus, I'm old. And uh, they only aired two and then fucking canceled the show. And then we put all six out on like a DVD like a year later and stuff. But it's, uh, I haven't, you know, it, it, the, it, I've s- seen it over time from time to time, but always like by myself. I watched this with, we had a sold out show, like 230 fucking people. And I honestly felt like the funniest person in the world, man. This show was so fucking funny. And I was like, what happened to me? I used to be funny. Now I make depressing movies like Clerks 3. (laughs) And then I realized what it was. Like I didn't, you know, everything I write and direct, I write and direct. The Clerks cartoon was a group effort. It it was kind of like the Masters of the Universe, which Thank God there were a few writers because I could spread the blame around and shit like that. <laughs> um, but the Clerks cartoon was like me, Dave Mandel, who, well, me, Scott Mosier, Dave Mandel. Dave Mandel is inarguably one of the funniest fucking people in the business and shit. Um, uh, who else? Uh, Steve Lookner, Brian Kelly, who went on to write for The Simpsons for like a million years and shit. And the guy who never gets enough credit, Paul Dini co-creator of Harley Quinn. Not my Harley Quinn, the fucking cartoon character and shit. He didn't live with us back in the day. Um, but he, he was the guy that came up with the idea, like, you know, because he knew me and he knew Dave and shit. He was like, you guys are doing the Clerks cartoon? And we were like, yeah. He goes, you know what you should do is a second episode, a clip show. <laughs> Which, for those that don't remember, like, clip shows on TV shows were, went, well, for those that don't remember, a TV show was... <laughs> They used to like, you know, during a season, they would always do a clip show where it was like kind of made up of 85, 90% clips of old episodes and they just shot some wraparound material and stuff. Right. It's and like, oh, Archie Bunker's in the hospital. Yes. And, and, and people be hovering over the bed and they'd be like, remember, remember that when? time? Yes. <laughs> oh, Archie. Fucking excellent poll. Uh, but one that made me feel appropriately old. Archie fucking Bunker? That's, <laughs> you couldn't have went for Urkel or some such shit? Uh, but yes, he was like, you should do a clip show. So the second episode was them reminiscing about episodes we never did and stuff. <laughs> which I think they air, ABC aired first. Nice. Which made no fucking sense whatsoever. Um, it's also the reason they did clip shows is because they were cheap. Because they didn't have to shoot anything new. It was one set, one actor, a couple actors, whatever. Right. So you got to shave the entire other four or five days of production and put that money back in your pocket by just rerunning old shit but you had to animate for fresh all of the stuff in your clip show. Yeah, that defeated the purpose. But it's amazing. I love that. It was a good idea, man. It was a good idea. After that, we did... Well, we had showed... uh, You know, Indiana Jones had opened the day before, and we did a watch with Kev, or I watched that with people. And then we did Clerks Cartoon Marathon. The day after that, we did the Blues Brothers, and we had fucking 160 people show up for the Blues Brothers, a movie you could literally watch at home. So after that, I said to Ernie, a Smodcastle keeper, Ernie O'Donnell, I was like, I'm going to be there all summer because that's where we're going to be shooting the 430 movie. If if SAG strikes, 
I think we still get to shoot because we're a low budget movie. Um, at least that's what I've been told and shit. Um, although that's when the strike will show up in New Jersey, I'm sure. <laughs> but um, don't tell anybody. Um, but uh, when I was uh, when I was there, I was like, we got to start showing old shit. Like fucking. Since I'm gonna be there all summer, let's show old stuff. So we show a series of movies called like the movies that made me. And so um, the Blues Brothers was one of them. So now we've got coming up for the movies that made me. We're doing Ghostbusters. Um, we're doing uh, Midnight Run. Um, we're doing, fuck, I forget. There's a few. It's at smodcastlecinemas.com. But then um, I came up with, ooh, let's do Eddie Murphy Mondays. <laughs> and so every Monday night is an Eddie Murphy. Yes, is a fucking Eddie Murphy movie. So we're showing like uh, uh, um, Beverly Hills Cop, fucking. Uh, Coming to America. Go Coming to America. Trading places. I want the night. That will be. That's not on the first month, but it will be there because I love the fucking golden. Uh, call child. me when you do Bowfinger. And Bowfinger yeah. will. That's gonna be in oh. the fall because that's a thinking person's movie. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we just, you know, we, we thankfully Eddie Murphy made most of his movies with Universal, uh, with Paramount rather, and Paramount is very good about letting you show old movies. God, thank God he didn't make a bunch of movies with Disney because then we mm. wouldn't have access to them. So you're not going to play the Haunted Mansion starring Eddie Murphy? No. no. As a, along with <laughs> I, there was never a danger of that. But I would have loved to have shown Mulan. You know, Ooh, that's what true. led to him doing Shrek, remember? Like mm -hmm. he did Mulan and then Katzenberg left Disney and he fucking went to create a DreamWorks and he's like, come be a donkey. And then Eddie Murphy got like fucking insanely rich and like Kevin Klein was like, I don't need to act anymore either and shit. So, yeah, man, fucking, if all throughout August, if you're on the East Coast, uh, come watch old-ass movies with me on Sunday, uh, what is it, Sa Saturdays? No, Sunday is the Movies That Made Me series, and then Monday is uh, the Eddie Murphy Mondays and stuff. Our show is sold out, the fucking Fat Man Beyond mm -hmm. that we're doing August 25th. We put up a show for, yes, thank you. We put up a show, that person bought tickets. We, uh, <laughs> we put up a, a Tusk screening with Justin Long, and that is going on, uh, was it August 12th, and I think there's like five tickets left for that. So the theater's been fucking rocking it, man. It's been a good time. And then last weekend, just two days ago, I went to Knoxville for a Fanboy Expo which was fun. I was there with Jason Mewes and taking pictures and signing and shit and whatnot. Joey Adams was there as well, so it was a little like Chasing Amy reunion. Um, and the next con that I got is Geeked Con in August. I think it's like August 19th. And that's in Shreveport, Louisiana. Don't that's you have one in like 10 days? Oh God, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. There's another con coming up. Little known. You've probably never heard of it. That's right. We've got the San Diego Comic Con coming up. And just like last year, uh, we took over the Tin Roof Inn in San Diego and turned it into a movies pop-up. And that's where we're doing shows. And we put up our shows for sale to that Kevin Smith Club members, and they sold it out. So before tickets could even go on sale to the general public, uh, uh, Jane, Sal, and Bob get old. Fat Man Beyond and Hollywood Babylon like sold out instantly. So yes, thank you. So um, you could still obviously you get food at movies and shit. I, and that's the home base for us. That's where I'm gonna be most of the time. I have a panel uh, for Masters of the Universe on Thursday uh, with um, uh, Chris Woods gonna be on the panel. Melissa Benoist, um, I, I forget who else, but a Tiffany few Smith. Tiffany Smith's going to be there as well. The other, the only Smith worth a fuck. And uh, <laughs> and then after that, I'm do, I'm moderating the, the panel for Sab Rogers' movie, Chasing Chasing Amy, the documentary, which has like been taken plaudits like crazy at, at its festival run. People really love the flick. Um, but that's the only real interaction that I've got with uh, the con. A lot of people, are you doing Hall H this year? But I didn't really have anything to talk about at Hall H. And so I was like, I, before everyone else canceled on Comic-Con, because like fucking Marvel's not going. I guess James Gunn said DC's not going. Um, Netflix ain't going. A bunch of studios aren't going because everyone thinks the strike's going to happen and they can't promote any, anything anyway. But even before that, months ago, I was like, I don't think I'm going to do a Hall H panel because last year, like, you know, we had Clerks 3 coming and shit. I had shit to talk about. 
what, what am I going to do? Go up on Hall H and be like, I bought a house in the valley. You know, <laughs> so, uh, so I don't even have a Hall H show. So the place to see us will be at the Tin Roof Inn mm -hmm. and stuff. And we're doing photos. That's the only thing I think that's left that people could buy is like you could take pictures with me and Mark, me and Ralph, me and Jason and stuff like that. But uh, the events have sold out. You're right. I completely forgot. San Diego Comic Con's coming up. I mean, what so is it going to be like? It looks. It's so weird. There'll be no news coming out of San Diego Comic Con. It'll this year. be a proper comic book convention. Is yeah. what it'll be. Yeah. Good point. This is the year of comic books. It very much is. Uh, we're uh, we're screening Splinter at Comic Con. Shit. When? Uh, where? We are. Thursday Thursday night at 7:30 in room 10. Anybody wants to roll through, Fucking free man. of charge. We'll have some actors there. Tiffany will be there. Nice. I think Trisha Helfer might be in town. Um, Six. Moon Bloodgood is thinking about coming in. Yvette Nicole Brown might be there. Captain Shaw himself, Todd Stashwick, is going to be there. Um, moderated by David DeSmalchin. Dave's doing your moderation? Yeah. Fucking A, man. And so we'll show it. We'll talk about it. We'll have a good time. And it's Thursday night, and then I got panels all day Friday, all day Dave Saturday. DeSmalchin is your moderator? Yeah. What the fuck, man? You didn't know if you were going, oh, literally. Yeah, it's true. You were like, I don't know if I'm going to be there. Fuck it, I'm making a movie. Fuck it, I don't know. I don't it's know. I don't true. know. It's true. I forgot. Dave's a good get. If you want to come, you can come. Yeah, I will. All right. It's uh, Thursday, right? Thursday, 7.30. Oh, oh, that's when I'm doing Jane Silent Bob. Huh. <laughs> Fancy that, too. Yeah, I'm preoccupied. Yeah. Sure. Um, but yeah, it'll be fun. I'm doing signings I'm at Dark Horse and at Distillery, which is a new comic book publisher that I'm doing some work with. I got some fun-ass panels to be on. It's all up on my Instagram if you want to come down. But, but Splinter is the big deal. It's bring that short to Comic-Con. Feels good. That's going to be Feels cool. Feels like home. Good for you, man. Give it up for Mark. He made a thing. Because I don't know if you know this, Kev, but heartbreak feels good in a place like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's the blue milk. Man. I was going to say, fuck. Um, all right. Do we have a sponsor? We don't. Are you shitting me? This is just free balling and free tube in this show. Nobody paid for us well, to be Well, then this show is sponsored by uh, Secret Stash Press. There uh, it is. My comic book label uh, through Dark Horse. The first four issues of Quick Stops has been uh, collected into a hardcover. Is there one here? No. Um, and then the first four issues of Masquerade, uh, the book that I do with Andy McAlfrish and John Springlemeyer, has been uh, uh, put into one of those Dark Horse makes these beautiful fucking hardcovers man I had them a few shows back I think I showcased them and stuff but I believe they're in comic book stores this week if you're into comic books and shit good point man fucking this year's con is gonna be a comic con I know you hasn't can, been that in a long time you can walk time. the halls and not touch strangers you can you can buy art from people and not have to bid against them with development executives you can you can skip Paul H you can not walk in that hall period yeah wow skip the line um, all right, so fucking no sponsor. I guess we should just start. <laughs> What's your name? Jesse Campbell. This show sponsored by Jesse Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a problem with your dick? Talk to Jesse Campbell. I mean, that's really all sponsorship is. Somebody gives you money and they, you say shit about them. So, like, yeah. I guess we literally could have a bunch of people like, here's 10 bucks, say my fucking name. Yeah, it's like, it's like buying a cameo, but on the biggest possible <laughs> stage. Um, all right, with no sponsor, we get to dive right... You know what? Fucking no. there is a sponsor. There is? This here fucking show is sponsored by the Scum and Villainy Cantina. Can, since I'm the sponsor, can I ask a question? Fuck yeah, man. You do anything you want as the sponsor. So before the show, Mark was like, I've been coming to the bar for six years i've never had a blue milk and he's on number two how is it can you give a blue milk review i mean i thought they smelled bad on the outside <laughs> what's 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 in a blue milk uh pineapple juice mm -hmm. rum coconut it's like a pina colada. Yeah. No, Cooked it's blue. how is it blue what's making it blue blue curacao <coughs> which is like a citrus liqueur so is it vegan? Uh, maybe. Have a sip? Well, I, uh, if it's vegan, I'll take a... Fuck I mean, your sip, yeah, I'll get a whole yeah, drink. There's no animal products in it. It's all fruit. I'll have a blue milk. What? Oh, my gosh. It's going to go... 
And that's how we treat the sponsors, man. I eat blue chew. I use Manscaped. <laughs> so I fucking should drink a blue milk. We're sure it's vegan, though. No milk in it or anything? There's no milk. Yeah, there's no. It's all fruit. It's called blue milk, but it's a lie? Yeah. Yes. The, uh, weird... That's soy milk? That, and that's vegan, isn't it? There's no soy milk in the blue milk. That's green milk. That's the titty milk. <laughs> You sell a drink called Titty Milk? No, uh, it's the, the green milk. Oh my God, look at the straw glows. Like a lightsaber. Oh, that's a... It's not a straw. Yeah, you need an actual straw. I would have been like... <laughs> oh, this straw doesn't glow at all. No. All right, man, we're going to fuck tonight. Reminds me when you were drinking the uh, Bud Light strawberry <laughs> seltzer. Oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> I got real drunk. pandemic shows. Um, fuck, that's pretty good. I haven't had weed in 23 weeks, but I might get fucked up tonight. <laughs> that's very refreshing. It's a cool, refreshing drink. I'm going to start being honest real soon. <laughs> you know what I really think about the Flash? No. <laughs> You know what, man? The Flash left my movie theater in a fucking flash. Like, it was only at Smog Castle for nine days. And then Ernie let it go. I was like, why? He's like, literally nobody was coming. Um, but I still, like, I, I still enjoyed that movie. I watched it four times. It's the only movie I've seen, like, four times in recent memory. I mean, they wish you'd paid for it four times. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I did, we got one! I did pay for it. I had it at my movie theater for nine days. Um, but it was good times, man, still for me. I, I previously mentioned, probably to my detriment, that I shot the screen, like I bootlegged yes. the movie for uh, the portion of, of Michael Keaton as Batman and stuff. And I still watch it periodically when I'm taking a shit or something. I'll sit there. <laughs> like, Michael Keaton as Batman, like, it was still one of the, my favorite things that's happened very recently. However, what is today? The 10th. That fucking blue milk is hitting hard, bitch. <laughs> so half these people didn't know if it was Monday or Tuesday, so you're yeah, not alone. Yeah, really. Uh, today's the 10th. In eight days, we can watch The Flash on, at home. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like coming to home video July 18th. One of the fastest turnarounds, pun intended, of a movie, a uh, major theatrical release. That was fucking, that window was brief. Mm, barely open. Yeah, truly. But, I, you know, no complaints here. I'm going to watch the fuck out of it. Are you going to keep your little pirated copy for nostalgia? I might, just because, like, it's, like, the best part. Like, him fucking uh, throwing batarangs and kicking ass and stuff. Oh, so fucking good. Um, so, yeah, I might. I might keep that. I, like, it sounds so weird to say, but I think I'm already buzzed. I never, I never fuck with alcohol, so like that really went someplace fast. Why did I buy a house in the valley? <laughs> <laughs> Give me three more blue milks, quick. Jen, I started drinking. <laughs> <laughs> quick, don't sell the other house. Um, all right, man. Should we get into it? Well, let's get into it. Uh, we got a... Uh, we got new. We, oh, we got reviews. Yes, we're going to talk about a TV show. Um, all right. Oh, Secret Invasion. Oh fuck! Boom. I drank this too soon. Now, I, now I got too be much too, truth. I know too much <laughs> truth is going to spill out. Uh, all right. Yeah, uh, we watched Secret Invasion. I watched two episodes. Mark watched three. Yeah. Uh, and I, I didn't watch the third, not because I was like, "Fuck this show." I just haven't caught up with it yet. But. Um, is anybody else watching Secret Invasion? How many people yeah, have, have yeah. how many people have One not episode. watched Secret Invasion? Put your hands together real quick. How many people are not going to watch Secret Invasion? Wow. That was an enthusiastic pass right there. Uh, for those at home watching or for those who don't know, Disney Plus, of course, is airing Secret Invasion, which I saw somebody online wrote an article about how this is one of the first Marvel shows that doesn't have a character team name in the title or something like that. They were saying that's the reason why the viewership is so low, because it's just like Marvel's Secret Invasion. Yeah, nobody knows. It's not like Iron Man's and, and the Secret Invasion or whatever. Right. Falcon Winter Soldier, Ms. Marvel, Loki. 
Wanda WandaVision. Vision. That had two fucking names in it. It really did. Uh, this is just Secret Invasion, so if you're not paying close attention, you know, maybe you skip it. Or yeah. They didn't even call it, like, Nick Fury, Secret Invasion, which would have made sense because it's all about Nick Fury. Yeah, but also would have been, like, dirty. Nick what? Fury's Secret Invasion. <laughs> and that might have made people fucking watch. No, the sands in the hourglass. Nick Fury's going to invade. I've seen many a story about how the f- debut episode was one of the, the least watched Marvel shows on Disney Plus and the subsequent episodes have, d- have not done much to help the cause. Um, it's, not, uh, it's surprising to hear as many people, I guess not surprising because we're a concentration of, of, of nerds and geeks in this room, but it seems like a lot of people are not watching Secret Invasion. I mean, uh, and it's hard to, to put a finger on why um, because that, that's marketing. That has nothing to do with quality. It's how, d- how did Marvel not mobilize the troops that they usually manage to mobilize to watch their stuff. And, and it's... Another one of these. You got this, buddy. And it's hard, I mean, maybe it's because you couldn't put Sam Jackson on a talk show. Maybe it's because the, the Writers Guild has made the no late night stuff and you just do an online press. And I, I don't know, I can't put a finger on it because he's still Samuel fucking Jackson. So I was gonna say, it's, a fu- it's, it's one of the oldest Marvel Universe characters in terms of all these movies and TV shows. He's been around since the end of Iron Man, for God's sakes. And he is, uh, according to IMDb, the highest grossing actor in the history of Hollywood. He and Harrison Ford flip-flop back and forth, but he has been in the most high grossing movies of any actor working. I guess that makes sense, yeah. I mean, aside from the Marvel shit, he was in like Pulp Fiction, which made a hundred million bucks. He's in Jurassic Park, he's in three Star Wars movies. Oh my God, that's right. Holy shit. (laughs) He's he's fucking up there. Did I ever tell you, I must have told you this, the fucking Stan Lee story one day, well, the late great Stan Lee was still with us. He told me, he goes, uh, Kevin, I read an article today about how I'm one of the highest grossing actors in Hollywood history. And I was like, how? And he goes, because I'm in all the Marvel movies doing cameos. Thank you. And I was like, oh, my God, that's right. Like, fucking, you're always cameoing in the movies. And he's going, yeah, if you look at a graph, it's a bunch of successful movies and mall rats. (laughs) 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 To Stan. (laughs) I sucked the lightsaber again, and it didn't work. (laughs) Anyway, so back to this fucking show. <laughs> uh, if you haven't watched Secret Invasion, it is ostensibly about the Skrulls, which if you maybe weren't paying attention to Captain Marvel. They were in Captain Marvel, the movie that made a billion dollars. It was. It did. He was. They did? They right. did. Whatever. Um, and in the, in the mid credit sequence of Captain Marvel, they revealed that Nick Fury is on some spaceship uh, sword. It, sword and saber. I guess yeah, he's saber, launching saber right. or yeah, whatever yeah. it is. But anyway, that's where he was. And so we pick up now in Secret Invasion, and Nick Fury is called back to Earth from his astral airy um, to hunt scrolls, I guess, because there's now a scroll terrorist named Gravik, played by uh, Kingsley Ben Adir. Who is he? He was Malcolm X in One Night in Miami. Oh. Yeah, he's a great actor. Um, and this, the fucking cast of this show is bananas. Like it's, it's got Olivia Coleman. It's got Olivia Coleman. It's got Amelia Clark. It's got Ben Mendelsohn. It's got Kingsley ben It's got Samuel fucking Jackson. Um, and it's kind of a spy thing. It's kind of a paranoia thing. It's kind of a, the Skrulls are among us. They've infiltrated us to the highest of levels. And they're planning to do some bad shit. And only Nick Fury can stop them. And Nick Fury may or may not be up to the task. What it should be is Captain America the Winter Soldier. Right. Because that was their espionage thriller, it, at the heart of which was like, fucking yeah, Hydra. Hydra has been inf- in, infiltrated fucking S.H.I.E.L.D. And, and has been around for a long time and stuff. And that's what it should be. It's what it feels like it wants to be. And Secret Invasion is, is loosely based, as much of Marvel is, on a, on a sort of big crossover arc that they did in the comic books, mm. where they revealed that many of the characters that you've been reading for the last 10 years or whatever had been replaced by scrolls at some point. So the Tony Stark who was doing Tony Stark shit, you then reveal that the real Tony Stark is in a bunker somewhere being held captive, while the Tony Stark who's been part of the Avengers was a scroll the whole time. And it was that kind of all over the Marvel Universe, and that shit was interesting, because right. you were playing with characters that you were already attached to, 
who may or may not have been them, who may or may not have been acting across purposes, but the show never gets to really play with shapeshifters of it all. Like, that's what's fucking cool. And they do open, spoilers, if anybody hasn't seen uh, Secret Invasion, sorry. Um, but they open with, with Martin Freeman as Agent Ross. They do. And he's like interrogating some dude about some shit or whatever, and then you reveal that this Martin Freeman, this Agent Ross, um, has been a Skrull. Is the, does, are they saying that he's always been a Skrull? It's unclear when the kidnapping and shape-shifting happened, right. but at the very least, we're left to wonder open-endedly, oh shit, if he's a Skrull, who else is a Skrull? Which is the candy of this idea, except then they kind of don't do anything with it, and it becomes about terrorists stealing dirty materials to make bombs. And it's like, okay, well, I, I guess. I mean, that's kind of Falcon Winter Soldier, and it's kind of every other terrorist movie we've ever seen. Right. But these guys can shapeshift. Like, why isn't it more fun? Why aren't we doing more of that? And the answer is probably we hired these actors <laughs> to play these roles, and we need to see these actors. Also, that's how you keep the budget down, right? Like, uh, at the end of the day, scroll makeup costs money. The transformation cost money and stuff mm -hmm. but you know if you're just like you could say they're scrolls but they look like fucking famous actors who you're already paying a lot of money to why would you go through the process but that's what kind of takes the fun out of it it's right. like if you're like you know they got their whole scroll community and shit where they're like this is where we're free to be scrolls but we still look like people <laughs> you know it seems like they're kind of cheaping out on the idea of like let them let a scroll be a scroll that's what I felt in the first two episodes. I was like, not enough scrolls in this bitch, man. Yeah, and like, it's not even like I can point to anything in the show and be like, that's executed poorly. Because yeah. it's shot very well. Shot it, very well. It's shot on location overseas. Like, again, you've got great actors doing great shit, but there's just something at its core that isn't quite as transgressive, maybe, as you want it to be. It doesn't take the liberties that you hoped it would take. And it just feels very conventional. And as a conventional spy thing, then you're like, all right, well, then we're going to be born identity, right? Like, well, no, because Sam Jackson's 80 years old. And so he can't do born identity shit. In real life? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I guess that tracks. Like, he was in Goodfellas and he was already old. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wow. he's old in Jurassic Park. Yeah, that's a good Hold fucking on to your point. Butts. Like, he famously wouldn't run in the Avengers because he's like, I'm too old to be running, Joss Whedon, so I'm not running anywhere. And Joss was like, right, I need you to kind of amble after this helicopter with a rocket launcher. It's like, fuck you, man. I told you I wouldn't do it, but I'll, I'll fucking lean quickly out of this door with this rocket launcher. I'm... I'm 52, Sam Jackson is 80 years old? 74, sorry. Oh my God, don't do that to oh, me, man. Like that's that much better? I mean, six years makes a difference. But no, he's still old. <laughs> but no. Wow, fucking, he looks good. He was what? There you go. Yes, the, the, those five years count. <laughs> that was good. Um, that was nerdy. That was as good as Mark's joke that he was mad nobody laughed at. <laughs> so I've gotten over it, I've gotten over it. Although I look forward to the internet saying that I chastised a room full of people for not laughing at my <laughs> As long as they don't attribute some fucking quote to you that you didn't say. No, they'll attribute it to you. Yeah, truly. <laughs> Shit so. hangs on you like herpes. My, my I, I don't mind telling you, I'm pretty drunk right now, man. <laughs> fucking, those two drinks hit me real fucking hard. This, you want my review? <laughs> it's fucking good. There you go. Put it on a post? <laughs> yeah, put that on a poster. My grandfather. Better than Secret Invasion. He used to describe things. Oh, damn. Well, I mean, come on. That's, that's not even a hot take, for God's sakes. I, I'm liking this new Kevin Smith. <laughs> Honest? Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean what I say, and I say what I mean. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm two episodes in, and, and uh, I'm more enthusiastic about it with, uh, than my wife. I've been watching it with Jen. And at the end, she's like, what do you think? I was like, yeah, I'm in. And she's like, I'm out. And she's been doing other things instead. <laughs> she's been listening to actual espionage podcasts while we watch the fucking show. Um, it's, it's just, I was wondering if it was me. Like, maybe I just got to a place where I'm too old to fucking enjoy this shit the way I used to. But I don't think it's me because I fucking went crazy for The Flash. So 
I, I don't, you know, I'm not saying Marvel's lost it, but like this, this one ain't grabbing me, man. I don't know what it is. And like you said, it's incredibly well made. It's not like, oh, they fucking dropped the ball or they, they're not spending the money right. It's just not, it, it, it feels like they don't know where they're going in phase four or five. No, and it also feels like it's so much of a type of thing. Like, if you look at it, you're like, oh, no, no, that's 100% like Bourne or like Jean Le Carré, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy mm. or like Bridge of Spies or whatever it is. Like, there's enough things you can point to in the world and be like, I see where you're going for. Except all of those things are better. And so you're just left with the like, okay, I mean, I, I, I get what you're trying to do, but you're just not hitting it. Mm. And the, the bar is a little too high. And it's a little too noticeable that you're not getting there. But it's not bad. It's just kind of... Meh. Yeah. It's yeah. mid. Oh, God. Yeah. That's Sorry. the worst thing you could say on the internet is call something <laughs> mid and whatnot. But yeah. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. Oh, oh, hello, thankfully. The, yes. the chat has uh, deemed it secret mid-vasion. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. The chat's brutal. Yeah, that's tough, but not unfair. Wow. Um, what happens in episode three? Uh, I heard that, um, can I, spoilers, in case you haven't seen it, fucking Amelia Clark gets, Khaleesi gets killed? Uh, she does get shot. It's unclear if she's dead or not. How fucked up was it that they killed Maria Hill? (laughs) (laughs) I guess you and I were the only ones who were like, what the fuck? I half expected her of them to be like, oh, she's a scroll too. That's a character who's been around since the beginning of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and they just very unceremoniously let her get shot. Yeah, And, and like, I don't mind killing a character. Like, I get what it does for you, right? Like, suddenly you as an audience become invested. You hope that the character for whom that person meant a lot to is either motivated, right? Like, so you expect Sam Jackson to be like, ah, oh, fuck it. It's time to roll hard and get my revenge from Ms. Hill. It should motivate him. And it kind of doesn't at all. He's we just met like, her mom at one point. And, and she was like, make this mean something. He was like, all right. And then he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just odd. It was very odd. Like, and they're also like, if, spoilers, again, they seem to be setting up the Super Scrolls, right? Mm. You know, which probably We seemed, saw that in a trailer. At one point, he does the stretchy thing. Right. So, like, is, he, is now the next wave of the Scroll attack front impersonating superheroes? In which case, like, all right, I suppose maybe that could be cool, but who am I going to care about that you're going to impersonate? Are you going to impersonate Thor? Oh. That's the thing, man. They need to bring some star power into it and shit. A little bit. Yeah. Well, they got, you know, um, Rhodes, man, Rhodey. Uh, they got okay. Don Cheadle, who they've hinted at might be, or the internet seems to think he's a scroll as well. Could be. Although he's a scroll who seems to have a very surface level uh, understanding of race relations in America. <laughs> <laughs> Explain. Well, it's <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just there's a lot of him, like there's this conversation between the two of them in this empty restaurant. I saw that, yeah. Where they're talking about, like, people with skin like us have sacrificed a lot to get to the position to tell people who don't look like us what to do and where to go. And then, like, yeah, but also it's about telling you that you're fired. It's like, what is this fucking conversation about? (laughs) Like, suddenly we're in, like, a fucking bus waiting room in 1968, (laughs) like, about to take some ride for the cause, and these two old black men are talking about (laughs) sacrifices, I'm like, what, what, Yeah, that was a weird scene. You know, I mean, God bless Marvel. Every now and again, they try to, like, to, like, swing into a thing about a thing. Sometimes it works. Black Panther 1 is very intentionally about that. It's very much about being African, and it's very much about being African-American, and the hyphen between the Black two. Black Panther 1. Black for Panther s- <laughs> For a second, I thought the sequel was called Black Panther 1. <laughs> he did it, you guys. W-O-N. He sure. won all the fights. Um, you know, and so Ryan Coogler was very intentionally making comment and commentary about the black experience, about Africa, about responsibility and blame and all of that shit. And it works because also the movie's great. Uh, And then, like, Falcon Winter Soldier kind of tries to tell you the price of being a patriot and being black. Mm. And it 
gets there sometimes. I mean, all the Isaiah Bradley stuff is really, really strong, and then Anthony Mackie delivers a 20-minute speech solving race in America, which... <laughs> <laughs> okay. I remember when that happened. <laughs> yeah, thanks, bro. Yeah. You did it. Everything fucking went... Well, it was good for yeah. the first time ever in America. Yeah, it turns out all lives do matter in the Marvel Universe. <laughs> Except Amelia Clark. Listen, the internet's going to come for me on that. Good, good, good. yeah. You're I ain't good. drunk enough to start saying black things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, take it away, Mark. Yeah. Excuse me, I, I speak jive. <laughs> <laughs> um, I ran out of blue milk. <laughs> Somebody get a cow in here This is quick. as dangerous as Super Chat. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> And Super Chat nearly destroyed the show. That it one really time. did, but fuck um, it. If we keep on plying you with blue milk. Super Invasion. Super Invasion. Secret <laughs> Invasion. <laughs> uh, it's how many episodes? Does anybody know? Three. Six. Three, Three happened, so far. Six, six to total. come, so we're halfway through. Yeah. Well, maybe something wonderful will happen in the next We're three. living on a prayer. Thank oh, you. Oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> yeah, look at those two empties. Fucking this one's to you, Ma. We're going to have to call you an Uber when this is done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my God. My wife's going to have to pick me up. I'm like, we're watching Secret Invasion episode three. I had this blue milk, and then we got a grimace shake, and then shit got turnt. <laughs> turnt. <laughs> we all live in the valley now. We could carpool. That's true. Wait, well, you live in the deep valley. I'm though, deep, yeah. Although about the same yeah. level deep as Mark. Yeah. Where are you guys? I'm out by like Woodland Hills. I'm West Valley. He's like North Valley. Oddly enough, I live like two blocks from my old weed store, which is so heartbreaking because now I could walk to my weed store, but like, what's the point? It's like the definition of ironic. It is. It re it's, well, it's the Alanis Morissette definition of ironic. <laughs> Not the actual definition. Of <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you can just walk by and like put your nose up on the window, like look at the weed, like, remember, buddy? They're like, there he is. Ah, oh, caviar gold. Um, caviar gold. <laughs> uh, all right, secret invasion, secret midvasion, yeah. as the internet, as the chat Catch says. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where do we go next? Uh, we go to some very limited news because it turns out because we uh, don't have anything else to review. I'm trying I'm, to think if I watched anything. Did you see anything else? Bam! I'm hey. Bam fans here. <laughs> Just gonna throw this comment. Evan Fowler in chat says, not gonna lie, I'm curious to see where this goes, dot, dot, dot. And then in parenthetical says, Kevin and Mark might kiss tonight. <laughs> oh my God, it'd be like fucking, it'd be like Kirk and Uhura kissing and shit. <laughs> <laughs> this show is sponsored by Gentle Homosexuality. <laughs> Sponsored by Curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> Suburban Curiosity. Yo, if somebody's got Fast and the Furious in their fucking phone right now, we could get them to watch it. It's true. I've never seen anything Fast nor Furious. Episode man. one of Fast and by Curious, the podcast you've always wanted. <laughs> <laughs> fast and by Curious. Um, yeah, have I watched anything? I've been watching a lot. I mean, this is not like a recent review, but I, I finally started watching Parks and Rec. What an amazing fucking show. Yes! Like, really fantastic, Where man. are you? Episode uh, 10 of season 5. Wow, okay. Yeah, I'm Good deep. push. Yeah, I'm, I'm what, like, little Sebastian is come and gone. <laughs> uh, but he keeps getting referenced all the uh, time. Um, Tammy, Ron Swanson's Tammy has happened like five times. Tammy um, 1 and Tammy 2? Yes, but Tammy 2, definitely. She's fucking hysterical, man. Um, yeah, it's a fucking wonderful show. I know most people are like, we watched it a decade ago, bro. I've been busy. I was making shit. I can't watch fucking Parks and Rec. I was making yoga hosers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what a fantastic fucking show, man. Everyone firing all, all, on all cylinders. And you know who's a huge fan of that fucking show? Mm. Kevin Feige. Yes. yes. Because... All of those fuckers wound up in a Marvel thing. <laughs> and even, what's her name? Fucking, um, you know, uh, fucking Janine Garofalo. But not Janine Garofalo. <laughs> Aubrey Plaza, thank you. <laughs> wow. 
I mean, she kind of like the whole time. I'm like, that's Janine Garofalo. What if like Janine Garofalo was like skinny and Puerto Rican? Um, <laughs> she uh, she's just signed up for a Marvel thing too. Did she now? Yeah, I saw that she's coming to the Marvel universe. But yeah, a lot of those fuckers wound up in the Marvel universe, man. And I think like Kevin Feige must be a fan. Uh, Parks and Rec is my new weekend fallback view because on cable it's on like every Saturday and Sunday for like five hour blocks really on TBS and I'll just drop in like what are we doing now oh it's Leslie and, and fucking Paul Rudd are having a debate like, I just saw the, that those episodes this week it was hysterical man fucking um, he, Paul Rudd was really good really funny the, where he's doing wee bowling and then she's like <laughs> Why don't you just bowl there? And they cut wide, and there's like a bowling alley there. And he's like, well, this guy looks like me. Yeah, uh, really fucking show wonderful death. show, man. Like, just, and warm and sweet and, like, very, like, Ted Lasso. Gives you the yeah. hardcore laughs and then also gives you, like, some real heart to it all throughout. She's kind of like the, like the anti-Michael... Uh, Scott, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, just really, like, she holds that show together. She's absolutely fucking wonderful. I always loved her on Saturday Night Live, but uh, what's her what's her name? Um, Amy Poehler. Amy Poehler. Fuck, she's like really great in that show. Yeah, I remember listening to some interview with Mike Shore, who was talking about the network kept wanting to push the jokes on the show. Right. And he, his whole thing was, I will make you laugh for 20 minutes out of the show, but you will give me t four minutes. Of those of the running time to break a heart or two. Yeah. And nobody will care that they weren't laughing for those four minutes if I make you feel so. 100% agreed, man. 100%. Uh, you know what I just saw was the episode in season five where they finally introduced Jerry's wife and it's Christy <laughs> Brinkley. <laughs> it was fucking fantastic. And there's the episode, and this is the weirdest, like it's a Parks and Rec kind of. Remember that time on that show? But where Jerry went to the hospital because he like had a fart, fart attack, farted his pants <laughs> off, and the doctor just looks deadpan in the camera and says, "That man has the largest penis yes. I've ever <laughs> seen in my life." <laughs> yeah, it's fucking good, man. If you haven't seen it yet, and I'm sure most people are like, "I saw it when it happened, Dick," yeah. but uh, I didn't, and fuck, it's good, man. You know what I'm watching? Speaking of a thing that I should have seen much earlier for a various number of reasons, I'm watching Atlanta for the first time. How is it? I was always I curious about that show. Um, I, know, like, I like him. He's the funny. white people are like, yeah. It's like a black guy finally came around. <laughs> how, how, how is it? It's amazing. Is it really good? It's phenomenal. Because it's got Donald Glover and it's got the other guy. Ryan Terry Henry. Yeah, who's also Lakeith the Stanfield, voice in fucking Spider-Verse. Zazie Bates. Zazie um, Bates as well. It's, it's phenomenal. I mean, f all right, so do you yeah. have anything more to say other than it's phenomenal? Uh, no, you seem like you had a thing you were... Black watching. Mirror. Have you seen Black Mirror yet? Because you said Zazie Bates. Uh, I have not seen the, the new season. Oh, my God. Fucking, I watched this a couple weeks ago. The new season of Black Mirror, which is only like five or six episodes long, is fucking phenomenal. And two of the episodes... You know, Black Mirror is always like technologically bent. Mm -hmm. Two of the episodes are just flat-out old-school horror. Like Ooh. one is, I don't want to spoil it, but one is like a monster thing and the other is um, also a, a, a devil thing, which was mm. fucking good, man. That, that guy was Charlie Brooker? Brooker? Brooker, yeah. Oh my God, fucking. If I could be anyone else as a writer, it would be that guy. He's fucking talented. This show is so fucking good. And, you know, they were gone for like a red hot minute. Like at one point he was like, during pandemic, he was like, why would I even make a black mirror? We're living in it right now. <laughs> um, but man, they came back strong. It was five or six episodes. Anybody know? Six, six, I think. It's fucking worth your time. It's good. I good just showed shit. my son the, uh, the Must Be Live Pig episode. Oh, <laughs> one of the fucking most brilliant hours of television ever fucking made, where they're like, this guy's got to fuck a pig or else somebody dies. And... <laughs> I, I like it should be the model for every TV show. All right, you come out of the gate hot, right? You gotta fuck a pig. <laughs> so fucking you crazy. You can't CG it. But wait, what is Atlanta about? Atlanta begins as a story about um, Donald Glover's character, Earn, who wants to be a music manager, and his cousin, Paperboy, played by Brian Tyree Henry, who's got a, a mixtape that's just dropped and is starting to get a little bit of like local radio play and he wants to be his manager and just help him blow up his career. But it then becomes this kind of story about, you know, initiative and capacity 
and fame and race and class and gender Bless and you. parenting and crime. There's a whole season that's called Robin Season, and every episode is about crime in some fashion or another. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about yeah, gentrification and capitalization on black pain. It's doing all of these things while also being a, a dense character study and really fucking funny until it's not. And then it's just fucking weird. Like, there's a whole episode where, and I know, like, I, I missed the, the fucking Atlanta Hive on the first go-round. So I'm like, everybody's seen Teddy Perkins, right? Yeah. That was so fucking crazy. I have nobody to talk to about this. <laughs> because everybody's seen it already. It's like you and Parks and Rec. We're like, right, hey, right. remember that shit that's like eight years old that's really good? <laughs> yes. Let's talk about it because I can hold you hostage on my podcast. Um, it's Bananas. He's basically playing Michael Jackson. Um, in white face and makeup. I've seen pictures or yeah. images of that. And it, the joke never cracks. They never let it slip. It's just this weird interaction with this weird guy that fame has twisted and warped. And all that Keith Stanfield wants to do is get a free piano. And he almost gets shot in the face. Um, it's beautiful. What, what are, season are you on? Episode are you up to? You watch um, all of it? Middle of season three. How many episodes? How many seasons they do? Four. And that's what and they're on right now. It's, do, it's, it's done. done. Yeah. Fucking a. All right. I got something to go to after. So yeah. That. Go do that. I'm waiting for Reservation Dogs to come back, which is maybe one of the best shows on TV. You like it, <sighs> dude? It's, it's really good. So fucking good. Funny or what? Season one is a little bit more ramshackle, where it's just hey, it's fucking knuckleheads on a reservation, just hanging out and doing weird shit. Season two becomes just like haunting and evocative and still funny, but it's it's very much a show about teenagers on a res that's informed by death. Like one of their best friends committed suicide and they don't know why. Mm. And that just kind of colors everything. But it's all these characters and all these stories and, and imaginary, like one dude just keeps seeing a, a native brave on a horse who keeps making fart jokes and shit. But it's, <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good. This is a Taika Waititi show? Taika Waititi and Sterling Harjo, who's the showrunner, head writer. Fucking I, man. Um, no, it's remarkable. Another show worth watching. All right, Indeed. good to know. Yeah, man. When so I'm that's... done with Parks and Rec. When I'm done with all the white people, I'll turn to the other show. <laughs> Kevin, you will never be done with all the white <laughs> no, people. No, Especially now because I live in the fucking valley. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got lots of white people out here. Oh, my God. Fucking throw a rock. Um, all right, man. So there, we reviewed some shit. Uh, time for the news? Time for the news. All right, everybody. Mark used to fucking be a journalist and shit, and then he's not, but now he fucking does the news. and <laughs> <laughs> so give it up for Mark he's gonna do the fucking news man uh, we got it more warm and fuzzy and shit <laughs> I mean definitely warm yeah it's, it's a lot of liquor um, I, as with uh, has been the last couple of months the caveat of the news is because of the alliance of motion picture and television producers and their inability and non-desire to negotiate with the Writers Guild. Dicks. Fuckers. There is not a ton of news because they have nothing to put into production. They have nothing being developed. So mm. there's no new announcements of things. Mm. So the news is a little bit skin flint um, these days. But there is some shit that dropped. Two of these are entirely about Deadpool. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. I don't want to jinx it, man, but this fucking Deadpool picture may save the world. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, I've seen some pictures and heard some shit. You don't want to blow it out of proportion. No, but fuck, man. Like, it sounds like it's going to be fucking amazing. Did you hear that they reached out to Affleck to maybe play Daredevil in it? Oh. Clearly, they're doing the multi... They're going to fucking... Like, everyone's doing the multiverse. They're, they're doing the multiverse. They're doing Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe. Yes. Bam fucking sounds Ooh, fantastic. Gonna, oh, Bamf man. I just want to clarify for comicbook.com and TikTok that Kevin Smith did not say that Ben Affleck is doing Daredevil. He I said, read that. Did you hear? Yes. Meaning he saw it on the internet the same place we yes. all saw so it. So if you're fucking screen rant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Fuck. Don't quote me because I'm quoting you. It's a vicious fucking circle. But yeah, I read online that fucking they, that they reached out to Affleck, or Affleck was spotted on set. 
And then yesterday or the other day, they said that Garner is coming back as Electra. Yep. And then I saw somebody wrote an article about like, or somebody tweeted and then somebody wrote a whole article about this fucking tweet because that's how fucking hungry the news is lately. That, um, oh man, they're just going after nostalgia. And I'm like, who the fuck is nostalgia about Jen Garner's Electra? <laughs> I mean, Jen Garner and I mean, Ryan maybe, Reynolds. Maybe even then. And, and I remember reading an article where she said that she didn't like Electra, And I was like, join the club. Um, so if it sounds like they're grabbing all the fucking people that used to be Marvel characters that weren't a part of the Marvel Universe. And do, don't act shocked. And uh, <laughs> you don't like nothing. Shut the fuck up. No, but for like the dude has been the model of decorum. And like, you know what? Everybody tried. <laughs> But this sounds fucking good, man. This movie sounds good as hell. Um, if that's what he's doing, collecting everybody that used to be a Marvel thing that wasn't the official Marvel universe and killing them off, or even if he doesn't kill them off, I hear there's more than fucking uh, Wolverine in it. More X Men than than Hugh more Jackman. X -Men? Yeah, more X Men than you could shake a stick at. I mean, and again, I read this. I didn't hear this from like fucking inside sources. I read this online. So if you're going to quote me, quote your fucking selves. Um, it sounds like, did you, see, did you say James Marsden? I just it? did. Like, and I. He's, how'd you hear that? I just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But it seems as likely as anything else. That's right. That, that the dude who's in jury as... duty would be like, I will strap on the fucking visor again. I'm fucking here for it. That sounds wonderful. Where are they shooting this shit? Uh, England, uh, right? England. Canada? Vancouver? Uh, in van. Vancouver? I mean, I know they always shoot him in Vancouver because that's where the strip club is, right? Orange, <laughs> orange peel or whatever the fuck. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the strip club from the first movie, what's it called? Orange something? That's a real strip club in Vancouver. Does Ryan Reynolds own it? No, but, but he's Van City Reynolds, right? He's a Vancouver <laughs> yeah. kid and shit. So they just opened the entire city to him? Oh, God, he owns that bitch. <laughs> just not that strip club. <laughs> but I think they're shooting in England. I've read something that they're shooting in England. I mean, they probably need for like the X Mansion. I'm sure there's some like we need an actual fucking castle. Maybe you got it's the internet over there, JC. F five Orange is the what is it? Five Orange. That's is the name the of the strip club. club? Yeah. Five Orange. Or the Cobalt was used as the exterior, but fi it's Five Orange. I've the... passed that strip club. Some I went to film school in Vancouver, so I passed that strip club a and lot. That was your local titty joint. I mean, I never went to it and shit. Right. <laughs> um, so, yes, Deadpool uh, 3 looks like it's going to be... And they're shooting, right? What happens if the strike happens? Do they have to stop or no? I think that's why they're shooting in England, in case the strike happens, because then they don't have to quit. Too legit to quit. Right, because the WGA has no jurisdiction in England. That's right. We should all move to England and make shit. <laughs> Uh, I can go over there and make clocks. <laughs> That's what they call it over there, clocks. Clocks? Yeah. With an A. Uh, you sure it's not like solicitors? <laughs> <laughs> Proprietors? Proprietors. Um, yeah, man, fucking. The, did you see the picture? Throw up the picture, Andrew. There Look at that fucking picture. Oh, my God, man. Blue and yellow, blue and yellow, blue and yellow, blue, blue and, and yellow. yellow. Indeed, he's finally wearing the colors. And a lot of people online are like, well, he's got sleeves. You, I'll bet you a billion dollars he rips those fucking sleeves off at one point because Hugh Jackman has these giant fucking guns. You don't hire Hugh Jackman. You don't make him work the fuck out like that and then cover those bitches in sleeves. Sooner or later, he's going to be like, the fucking gun show's in town. Sun's out, guns out. <laughs> yes. Um, Ryan Reynolds is one of the smartest motherfuckers in this business, man. He listens to the audience. He's giving these fucking people what they want, and that's the blue and yellow suit. How fucking... Years. Is that how long it's been? 23 years? It's going to be fantastic. He'll probably give him the headpiece, too, won't he? We'll yeah. probably see him in full mask for the first time. <gasps> this Balls movie, out, I'm telling man. you, this movie's going to save the world, man. <laughs> And it's a third. It's the third movie. It ain't even like Deadpool 1, bitch. It's three. Prove it. He's going to stick the landing, because then after that, they're not going to make another one, right? Because they stop the one at they three. get it right. Oh, fuck. He's always gotten that right. Those Deadpool movies are fucking phenomenal. Um, yeah, that, that picture lit up the internet today. 
Um, I ain't going to say it broke the internet because that's old shit. No, fucking Elon Musk. Look at that. Just, let's just fucking look at it. Look at that shit. <laughs> My God. And they just put that out there and shit. They were like, all right, go ahead, look at it and shit. That's how confident he is. That's like Ryan Reynolds showing you his cock. And not just that, he put it out in the week that we've all adopted 19 new social media platforms. Yeah. And was like, this will pierce it. It'll yeah. be fine. Oh, my God. He's like, got a Threads account and shit. I don't, I don't, I can't keep up with it, man. I just got too old. Um, you stopped Twitter? I stopped Twitter. Every time I try to fucking tag you and like, uh, hey, we're doing Fat Man Beyond. He says, you can't tag Mark Bernard. I said, fuck you. He's my friend. I can do whatever <laughs> I want. But Twitter, He's going to come to my house and sit in another room while I fuck my wife. <laughs> That's how close we are. <laughs> and yet somehow Elon Musk won't let me tag you and shit. Because I'm too busy fucking his wife. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm, oh, not, I'm not. I wouldn't. How many blue milks did you have? I've been blue milking my whole life. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? Just <laughs> fucking put that picture back up. <laughs> Show that picture again, Andrew. Make them all warm inside. Look at that shit, man. God, that's my fucking happy place. That's my happy place because visually, it's beautiful. It is. Um, having Hugh Jackman back is a beautiful thing. But it just shows you that that motherfucker to the left in the red absolutely cares, man. That's a dude who's listening to the fucking internet. You know, uh, when I... we sh Really, man, give it up for him. When, uh, when, I, when we watched... Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, my friend Ernie O'Donnell, he asked me with this childlike innocence, he was like, doesn't Hollywood ever ask the audience what they want? And I was like, you poor fucking uneducated fool. <laughs> I was like, no, they just give the audience what they think they want. Ryan Reynolds, God bless his Canadian heart, literally probably reads, he's on the internet all the time, fucking probably reads the internet and is just like, why am I creating ideas i'm just going to take the ideas that are given to me for free and doing what we want man fucking like he's manifesting literally what we want god bless him. so we've been doing it wrong all these years yes fucking fuck being original listen to the audience and shit if you're gonna make shit that's like meant for the audience listen to the audience and that's what he's doing he's giving us those fucking blue and yellow colors god bless that fucking rap scallion <laughs> all right what else you got <laughs> Uh, Who's he married to? Blake Lively. He's fucking, she's lucky, man. <laughs> Could you imagine being married to a guy? Because all that guy cares about is like, what do you want? And she'll be like, do this. And he's like, I'll do it. Because that's what he does. He does what everybody wants. He's, he's Canadian, man. He's a people pleaser. He's codependent is what he is. <laughs> but I'm here for it. God bless Ryan Reynolds. I fuck. will unhinge my jaw all night long. That's what I want. Fuck Fuck you. Careful. Yeah, sorry. Uh, all right, we have one last news story. What? You, we what? just started the news. Because you hit all of them in one weird blue milk fueled rampage. True. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I guess we did all like, the news. Oh, did you see this picture? Oh, also Jennifer Garner. <laughs> That's and, true. Yeah. Well, Deadpool covered a lot of news. It really did. Yeah. Like most of the news. Uh, there's, a, there's an upcoming update for Call of Duty, which will introduce the boys as playable characters in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. The boys as in the TV show. The as boys. in Homelander and Black Noir and Starlight. And oh, shit. Do we have a picture of that or no? I don't know. Standing by. Give it up for fucking Andrew, man. Without him, you ain't got no fucking imagery. Standing by. He's the unsung hero of this bitch. He's the Ryan Reynolds of this fucking bitch. Yeah. He listens to the audience and he puts up what they want. Although not right now. He's looking for a it's, looking it's, for a picture. We snuck this one on him. It's coming shit. through now, Con. Oh, fucking nice. <laughs> oh, fucking that was good. That's deep cuts right there, man. Just for you. Thank well, you. While we wait, you want to hear a cute story? I would love to hear a cute story. Give it up for Banff Man, man. <laughs> Inventor of the blue milk cocktail. God bless his heart. So... Uh, every year we take my daughter Jocelyn to see John Williams at the Hollywood Bowl. Did you go to that? So we went, we went last night. Yeah. And so we've taken my her. My kid yeah. went. Harley went as well. We, uh, so she, 
we took her when she was like 10 months old. We took her when she was like a year and a half. She's two and a half now. So she kind of gets it more. And so John Williams plays, starts Raiders March. And we're in a box seat. And so there's like, Jen and I are sitting behind and Jocelyn's in her own seat up front. You were in a box seat? It's good to own a fucking bar, isn't it? (laughs) Rich man and shit. Uh So Jocelyn jumps up on the chair and turns around and goes, I know this song. I know it. I listened to it at the bar. Adorable. And, they, and Which, then Dyfus took your child away. <laughs> and then everybody around is like, <laughs> the division of youth why and is this service? child in a bar? <laughs> How was the John Williams show? For those that don't uh, live out in California, at the Hollywood Bowl, every year? Every or year. Twice a year yeah. or whatever the fuck? John Wood, and I thought he stopped this shit. Isn't he like? Isn't he like older than Sam Jackson? He's yeah. He's, he's ninety one. He does ninety six ha- as I grade. <laughs> <laughs> how how old is John Williams? Does he Not ever come 91. out? Ninety one. He's yeah. ninety one. So do they begin every concert with him going? I'm ninety one, and everyone's like, Wah! I mean, I go every year because I'm like, he can't be doing this again next yeah, year. That's and, true. I invented music. Every Here year. We go. <laughs> Every year he gets my money because he won't quit. How, uh, many, how long is the show? So uh, usually like David Newman does the first hour and then John Williams comes out and does the second and David hour. David Newman is who? Of the Randy Newman, the Newman dynasty of Hollywood who's Ooh. written every He's song. He's related to Dave, yeah. Randy Newman? Yeah. And Newman from Seinfeld? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is he a composer? And, and, you know, and it can, yeah. Um, so he does a bunch of shit, and then John Williams comes up. Does he do John Williams shit, or he does his own he shit? He usually does, like, the music of the movies and does, like, the best stuff. David Newman did Lawrence of Arabia? Oh, they perform it and shit. Yeah, they do, like, the best soundtracks, and then they build and then up And they're to like, John. now, ladies and gentlemen, the motherfucker you've all waited for, John. The Count of Monte yeah. Fisto, the Ayatollah of Rock and Roller. <laughs> John fucking 91 year old Williams. Will he do it again next year? Let's fucking see. Don't clap too loud. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes out and does he do this shit? Yeah, he does. He conduct. <laughs> yeah, he conducts. <laughs> I mean, he that's how he make music, they fucking say. Uh, As if like that's the thing that's going to break John. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, you got to do this. No, don't lift the very heavy baton. That's what keeps him alive. Motility, man. Doing this shit once a year. But it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. He came out and he did all of his hits. Like E.T. and um, Superman. Superman. Billie Jean. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> did, so he did fucking E.T. Uh, e. Put, e. Him is, Put him on the glass. Put him on the glass. So E.T. is... Na, 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 na. Mm-hmm. Fuck, I could do this shit. <laughs> and you could do this. <laughs> na, 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 na. And Superman is. <laughs> Too drunk. <laughs> oh, that must kill, man. That's when fucking chicks take their tops off and shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> what else does he do? Dun, 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 dun. And then does he do fucking? And, and then he did Schindler's List. <laughs> I can't do that one. <laughs> did he really fucking do uh, Schindler's List? That's where everybody he, gets respect and puts their tops back yeah. on and shit. It's like, can I have my bra? I'm sorry, Mr. Williams. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry just about that. Put these away of respect. How does that go? Do Schindler's List. Oh, I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> it's like me going, I ain't drunk enough to do black stuff and whatnot. JC's like, I am not touching Schindler's yes, List. Yes, I gotta work it. My name town. is Riefenberg. I am not touching Schindler's List. Um, does he do, st- he must, does he close with Star Wars or open with Star Wars? He did a Star Wars in the middle. What? He, and then he does an encore, and the encore Where he's was... he's like, more fucking Star Wars. He did Yoda, and um, he ends with Imperial March. That's how you end? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he did it, he conducted it with like a lightsaber. And, and do they show clips from the movie as well? 
For some of the movies they do, but like not for all of lists, them. In case you're like, <laughs> <laughs> why am I sad? Oh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, Schindler's List. <laughs> Pull out your hankies. It's Schindler's List. And they run Rock out with your cops out. It's sad. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so some of them they do clips for, not everything. Oh, yeah, so sometimes you just watch the fucking orchestra. They have to license them. So they're probably like, what's the cheapest? This guy, they make this 91-year-old fuck license shit? <laughs> he don't get carte blanche and whatnot? I, I mean, that's probably why they had Star Wars clips. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they better fucking give him shit for free and whatnot. It better be all free clips and blowjobs for the rest of his life. <laughs> Motherfucker gave us so much fucking music. It's like there's two composers in the world, him and Danny Elfman. Like, those are the two rock star composers. I ain't saying like there ain't a billion great composers, but like those are the two composers everybody can do their song. Meanwhile, do their Hans music. Zimmer is like, what the fuck did I do? <laughs> <laughs> all right, but do a, do a Hans. Yeah, you know how I just did all the John yeah. Williams? Do Hans Zimmer. That ain't fucking Hans Zimmer. That's Dune, man. That's, Hans that's Hans like, Zimmer dying or something like that. <laughs> but you could do John Williams. You could do Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman's... This is the Can't weirdest. do his Spider-Man, though. Can you do Carry Danny Elfman's Spider-Man? No. I mean, Spider-Man, inarguably, one of the biggest fucking franchises ever, but can you do Danny Elfman's theme to Spider-Man? I can't. But no. you could do, like, this is Halloween, this is Halloween, pumpkin scream. John Williams, he ain't got any lyrics, does he? He don't uh, come out all shirtless and fucking ripped like Danny Elfman and... <laughs> do a set and shit like that does he so i just listened to my buddy does a podcast on the music of uh, uh, called soundtrack show and he the love theme of superman actually had lyrics that he wrote yeah can you read can my you read mind, my mind? and they recorded it yeah margot then, kidder recorded it and but in the movie they they were it's like voiceover she wasn't great so they used her they just she had her speaks she, she goes speaks can you it? read yeah. my mind but right, there's there's yeah very much but there is an actual recording where the chick is like can you read my mind like she's really singing. it's like a pop yeah it's supposed yeah. to be like a pop song Every once in a while you hear it on like a serious F xm like fucking 70s show or something like that. it's uh, john williams has been nominated i just did this on my trivia a couple weeks ago he's been nominated for god like some ridiculous amount of Academy, 48 or How something. How many has he won? Uh, I don't remember. But three of them were for best original song. And one of them was Can You Read My Mind? I don't think that, I don't think that was one of them. What were the original songs that he's done? Eight Mile. I can't even do the lyrics and shit. Um, has he really? Look it up. You got the fucking internet there. How many? 53 nominations, five wins. What the fuck kind of odds are those, That's man? That's like Susan Lucci shit right there. Yeah, really, man. No wonder I'm never going to win Academy Award and shit. I mean, that and quality. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fucking bartender, this blue milk ain't going to milk itself. What the fuck? <laughs> Oh, my There's wife is getting so... Cow, I'm going to go home and fuck the shit out of my wife. <laughs> in, in an empty house? It's blue milk night. <laughs> I'm taking my shirt off for the first time in 30 years. Put on a little Prince blue light. <laughs> yes. Turn on your blue light. Yes. Everything's all right. I turn the lights off. That's the only way that shit happens. Oh, so, okay, best song... Can nice I? to be around from Cinderella Liberty in 1974, which, who knows? So and then that was before you were even born. Thank oh you. Oh shit! Give it up if, for the bartender, everybody. <laughs> this show sponsored by the bartender. I need a straw. Thank you. Where's my straw? Where's my fucking straw? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank all right, you. so that was 74. What else? If we were in love from Yes Giorgio in 1983. What the fuck is that? 
I have no idea. This is what he wins for? Now, These were the nominations. Okay. Nominations for songs. Okay. And then his other song nomination was Somewhere in My Memory from Home Alone. That's kind of like the... There's lyrics to the, to the score. To the Home Alone? For Home, a Alone. Home Alone. Score. John Williams did Home Alone? He's basically done everything, so yeah. He didn't do fucking Batman, bitch. Because if he did, he would have been like... Dun, 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 dun. You know what Danny Elfman also did? He never gets enough credit for the the score to Scrooge. Amazing fucking score. La 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 we could do the Hollywood Bowl. Fuck John Williams, I mean, when man. John Williams decides not to, like, they'd be a moron not to call Screen him. Rant's going to be like, Kevin Smith says, fuck John Williams. <laughs> I could do that shit better. <laughs> uh, what else? What did he win for? Uh, he won his first one for Fiddler on the Roof in 1972. Right. Jaws, Star Wait, Wars. Fiddler on the Roof, but I mean, that was a play first, right? Broadway mm -hmm. play. Musical. Yeah. Best so. scoring adaptation and original song score. Interesting. All right, then what? And then he got, uh, he won for da -dum. Jaws. Da -dum, da -dum. Fucking he won for Jaws? Well, that makes sense. Did he do Jaws at the, at the Hollywood Bowl? No. no. Are you shitting me? Uh. Could you Somebody imagine? wants their money back. Yeah, no kidding, man. Could you imagine having a career so fucking storied that you're like, I'm going to skip Jaws tonight? Because I got a zillion other fucking pieces to do. I mean, he did Harry Potter. He didn't play Harry Potter the other night either. Did he do the Harry Potter score and he didn't play it? Mm -hmm. Fucking good. John Williams, too many bangers. It truly, man. Got it. He did, uh, so Star Wars, E.T. Of course. E. Uh, these are the ones he won. Schindler's List. Those are his wins. Respect. And then it, I could read his nominations, but we'll be here for an hour. I mean, we don't have any more news. So. Yeah, fucking feel free. <laughs> so like, we're just killing. We're all the ones that he can sing. Yeah, we're all drunk. So go ahead. Seventy six. He was nominated for Jaws, then Star Wars, and Close Encounters. In he didn't win for Star Wars. He won. He won, nominated and won, but he was nominated for Close Encounters the same year. Are you shitting me? Star like, Wars and Close Encounters. <laughs> and Close Encounters is all about music. You know Steven Spielberg was like, fuck this shit. <laughs> then Superman. Michael Winslow in the house. Superman in 79, Empire Strikes he Back. He won for Superman? Nominated. He should have fucking won for Superman. Wait, nominated. in 79, because that movie came out in 78. 78, so it's right. always yeah. the next year. Then Superman, Superman is fucking an amazing so uh, the score that still holds up. Dun, 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 dun. I'm gonna fuck to that tonight. I'm gonna make it through like two notes. Somebody killed Kevin. Well, no. I uh, every time I'm in New York and I'm walking on the streets, I have to do the Otis theme. I got your paper, Mr. Luthor. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's a fucking banger too, man. Fuck, this guy's good. <laughs> Here's my hot take. <laughs> Tom Williams is good. What else, JC? Uh, then in 81, Empire Strikes Back. Oh. it's just what happens when there's no news and blue milk. <laughs> yes, a deadly combination. <laughs> Chad is just like, the show's dead. The show jumped the shark yeah. tonight. Uh, 82, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I mean, that's guy's on a Motherfucking... 
<laughs> that was 82? Yeah, because that was 81 when it came out. And it's then E.T. The <laughs> <laughs> we did that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Return of the Jedi. Did what was the was there what was the new part of Return of the Jedi? Yub yub. Like oh, he did that shit. Did he do yub yub? Yub yub. yub, yub yeah. Nub? Adobe, 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 Adobe. Jabba's theme, the tuba. <laughs> That's my best Java. Is that what I look like doing it and shit? <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's the best part of the night. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I didn't know there was a Java's theme. I mean, I'm sure I knew that, but I'm not familiar with it. And then uh, Indiana Jones. Is there a Jones. Salacious Crumb theme? There should be. There better be. Bib Fortuna's theme? There was Lapty Neck, which was done oh, by... Oh, fucking, he did that shit? Lapty Neck. His son wrote that. Jet? No, John Williams' son. Jet? <laughs> I'm going to double down. <laughs> He's also got a kid named Jet. Um, who also is the lead singer of the band Toto. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> John Williams' son sang, I bless the rains yes. down in Africa. Mm -hmm. Gonna take some time to do the things I never had to Ooh. do. Turns out I can talk about black stuff. I sang Africa. <laughs> the whitest fucking song on the planet. That's a song that they make fun of in Book of Mormon when they sing, uh, I am Africa. <laughs> it's pretty much making fun of that song. Is it that or is it also the, do they know it's Christmas? Yes. Which is also a bunch of white people being like, shit, yeah. Hey, yeah, no, there's Christians in Africa, guys. Missionaries for thousands of years. Do they know it's Christmas? They also have fucking television. And there won't be snow in Africa this Christmas time. Except Kilimanjaro has snow all the fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> like the most basic look at a fucking map song ever. <laughs> Listen to these hot takes, man. Yeah. We're coming at fucking Live Aid like Fuck 40 you, years off. later. I'm coming for your shit, <laughs> is, is he dead? I'm sorry. No, he's Fuck still him. around, isn't he? Is he Bob Geldof? I don't know. Bob Adam, Geldof is Bob Geldof still alive? Yeah. Yeah. I'm coming for your shit, Geldof. He's alive. He just don't like Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well done. What else you got? <laughs> what other movies can we sing loudly? Uh, <laughs> I mean, after that run, he did Empire of the Sun, The Witches of Eastwick. Oh, Born Empire of the Sun! I don't know that fucking song <laughs> at all. I don't know that music at all. Mitch, Witches of Eastwick had a pretty banging score, but I can't sing it. Witches of Eastwick is an amazing movie because you get to see Jack Nicholson be the Joker years before he plays the Joker. Women, a mistake? Or did he do it to us on purpose? Because I want to know. Stop, stop. Sorry, stop. <laughs> nope, this is not the one. I guess. <laughs> I guess you're right. It's a bridge too far. What else you got? Uh, born on the Fourth of July. Worked with Oliver Stone. Oh. Da, uh, na, 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's not Tom Cruise. Loses I'll give his you a thousand dollars if you could do the score for fucking Born, born on the Fourth of July. I'm sure there's a flute in there somewhere. So fucking. <laughs> That Fife shit and, sounded way too perky for Born on the Fourth of July. I don't know if you ever saw that movie, but it's kind of sad. No, that's when they take his legs off. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Uh, you got? Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. That's just more of the same. Keep going. Oh, it's got that great Grail theme. What's the Grail theme? Do it. I. Oh my God. Da, well, I'll let Andrew do it. Da, 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 da. Na, 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 it's a macro theme, but just a little bit bigger. <laughs> yes. Um, Home Alone. I can't fucking. I refuse JFK. to do that. I don't even know it, but. Ooh, but AI is a banger. Everybody Schindler's List, which we've already established, we're not going to touch. Yeah. Uh, Amistad. No. 
Uh, <laughs> they played it. They played that last night. Did they? Yeah, they, they played a, Amistad. Yeah, they didn't Although, play Jaws, but they played Amistad. They did Amistad the people in the crowd. before. <laughs> they did it before John Williams came out. Before he came out. Yeah. He's Give like, us you, those free birds. He's like, you do that shit for it. Get out there, man. Let David Newman do that shit. Uh, Saving Private Ryan. I'm skipping some, but what was Saving Private Ryan's theme? Oh, I, I like know. Born on the Fourth of July. I'd Probably, wager. yeah. Uh, drums and shit. Harry Potter. Catch me if you can, which was <laughs> awesome. Oh, Harry, Catch me if you can is fucking great, man. It's very jazzy, and I'm not a, like a jazz guy, but that's a good score. Uh, memoirs of a Gay. What is Harry Potter's theme? How's that shit go? Oh, na, 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 something like that. Yeah, yeah it's very right. Christmassy. Na, 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 exactly. They're oh remaking God, that shit. Jurassic They're doing a Park TV too. show. Yep. Oh, Jurassic Park. That's right. He wasn't nominated for Jurassic Park. Oh, you fuck you! Shit? How's Jurassic Park go again? Mm. Na, 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 na. No, that's fucking E.T. <laughs> <laughs> How does Jurassic Park go? Na, 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 na. We're making dinosaurs. We're making a stegosaurus and a fucking dillosaur. All right, that's one take. We're done. <laughs> yeah. Press that shit, Barry Gordy. <laughs> We're going on the road. We were, These watching, are we were literally watching Parks and Rec, and I said to my wife about Rashida Jones, I was like, you know who her parents are? And she's like, everybody knows who her parents are. I was like, fucking tell me. She's like, Quincy Jones and Peggy Lipton. I was like, all right, well, who's Peggy Lipton? She was like, she was in Twin Peaks. I was like, and? She was like, Mod Squad. I was like, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> so I fucks with you. You're pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I you did. I finally, I've, after like 25 years, I finally approved my wife. I was like, you're all right, man. You know, you've been paying attention. <laughs> uh, Tintin, War Horse, Tintin. Lincoln, oh, fuck. Book Thief. I'll give you $1,000 if you could do the theme to <laughs> Tintin. I'll give you $1,000 if you saw Tintin. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody in this room see Tintin? Put your I hands up. I saw it. You fucking liars. You're all a bunch of liars. Nah, it's a little white boy on a bicycle. Yeah. Did you see Tintin? I did see Tintin. Why? <laughs> because it's a little white boy on a bicycle. <laughs> I see all the little white boy on bicycle movies. It's my favorite kind of movie. I don't know why I suddenly turned into Charlie Murphy. <laughs> I see all the white boys on bicycle movies. <laughs> The late, great Charlie Murphy. Give it up for Charlie Murphy, everybody. <laughs> he could tell a story, man. Man, it's 10 o'clock. Yeah, I guess we should move on. <laughs> oh. Oh, yes. It's oh, there it you. is. Hey, give it up for Andrew, man. He got the fucking video game image. Call of Duty. The boys. Uh... Yeah. I'll be honest with you, that was kind of weak. Give it up for fucking Andrew, man. <laughs> he sits in that fucking hot back room and he works hard for you. This is the part of I the mean, show where I start yelling at the audience. He masturbating long enough to Google images. Yeah, it took him a minute, though. <laughs> you're you're yeah. fucking yeah. slipping, Andrew. <laughs> Don't let us catch you slipping. <laughs> Um, all right, so get, yeah, we should move on to Q and A. Uh, or he could just read more movies. So <laughs> I, know, I was having a good ass time trying to remember themes and shit. Made me happy that I remember as many as I did. Like it's kind of like if you were if somebody held a gun to you and they're like, "Do fucking Raiders." <laughs> I'm, I'm, if, or do fucking John Williams. I'm all, I'm pretty good all the way to Schindler's List, and then I'm like, you might as well pull that fucking trigger, man. <laughs> so I don't remember how that shit goes. There's a Yiddish in it, maybe? I'm, try I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I can't remember. All right, what are we giving away today? Oh, well, fucking shit. <laughs> uh, our good friend Brett Deacon probably came through again, man, as he always Indeed. does. He did. He's in the house tonight. Give it up for Brett Deacon. Where's Where Brett? is he? Where the fuck is yeah! he? Yeah! 
Yeah! I love Deacon so... I mean, I'm drunk, so I love everybody. I love Deacon so much, I named a movie character after him. If you ever saw Zach and Mary make a porno, the character of Deacon that Jeff Anderson plays, named after Brad Deacon. Uh, once again, uh, our friend, our great friend, Brett Deacon, he works for the good folks at 4DX. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, he is 4DX and shit. Uh, he's giving away some 4DX tickets, man. So when you win, whoever fucking uh, gets their question picked by Banff, man, they're going to walk away with two tickets to go see a 40X picture, man. This is not quite the summer to go see a 40X movie. Although is Mission Impossible in 40X? Oh, yeah, fuck, is it? Oh, oh dead could, wrecking my balls, son. That's right, man. You could take these 40X tickets and go see Mission Impossible, the movie that's going to save the box office of the summer. You know, I used to have an opinion as a movie goer and shit, but now I have an opinion as an exhibitor, somebody mm. who owns a movie theater. So we have three fucking movies that we're pinning all our hopes to, man. You all right there? Holy shit. Right. Okay. I heard that shit. Fuck. Uh... Oppenheimer, Barbie, and fucking uh, Mission Impossible. So, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning. It's up to Tom Cruise to save summer fucking 2023's box office. So you could go see fucking for Mission Impossible in 4DX. Is Oppenheimer going to be in 4DX? No? Oh, come on. Fucking good thing, right? <laughs> what about Barbie? Are they doing 4DX? No? So Mission Impossible is your fucking way to go, man. Uh, 40X, if you've never been on a 40X fucking experience, you sit in a chair that literally just fucking brings the movie to life and shit. I, we went and saw Guardians of the Galaxy. Were you there? I was not there for that. We saw uh, far, No Way Home. We did see No Way Home. And we saw Dune there we as saw well. Dune in 40X. well. I saw fucking Guardians of the Galaxy in, in 40X. And uh, no bullshit, I ain't even fucking exaggerating. At one point, the chair shook me almost out of the chair. Uh, the chair comes to life. It moves with the movie and shit. It shoots water at you. Smoke happens and whatnot. It's fucking a crazy experience. Uh, it makes a movie fucking better. So 40X, even if you don't win these tickets tonight, there's a 40X theater somewhere near you in some big city. How many 40X theaters are there today, Brett? 50 plus 40X theaters across this great fucking nation of ours. Make sure before you leave this best of all possible world, you go see a fucking movie in 40X. It's a hell of an experience. So, uh, winning questions are going to win uh, two 40X tickets. And what is this? Trade paperback. This is uh, a member of our audience has uh, donated three of his. Hey, you hold it up in your shot since they cut to you and shit. So, three of his. Trade paperback. And it's called Immortal Era. Whose is this? That's mine. What's your name, Captain? Ed Davis. Give it up hey, for Ed, Ed Davis, man. <laughs> Ed Davis ain't just fucking talking the talk. He's walking the walk. He made a goddamn comic book. And this is a thick ass comic book, thick as a dick. Tell us about it, man. What is it? Hop on up. Yeah, jump up there. Give it up for Ed Davis, man. He's going to testify. All right, so this book, I actually came on your show back in 2019 when I had just one issue out. And before the pandemic. Before Those the were pandemic. good old, yeah, good that, old days, that weren't they? That made shit hard to sell books when yeah. the pandemic was going on. But I had one out. You guys gave away some stickers for it. And now I'm about to release the eighth issue of the series. Fucking A. Give it up for him. He's self-publishing. <laughs> He's making comic books. So the basic premise of the story is it's a world 200 years in the future where everyone has stopped dying. So everyone's become immortal, but no one has powers and abilities. So it's, a, it's two groups fighting against each other, one who wants to keep the status quo and the other who wants to save humanity by killing them. So wait, everybody lives forever, but you can be killed. You, can, you can't be killed. They want to find a way to kill people because in this world you could become a decapitated head and still live on. People are still aging. They can still have a disease that'll just last infinitely. So there's a group of fighters who realize that that's not an existence they want. So they're out trying to make the world a better place by killing people. It's a legit captivating idea. Give it up for that shit. All right, man. Ed. That's some good shit. Well done, Ed. You the writer? I'm the writer of the series, yeah. Who's your artist? My artist is Cesar Oliveira. He's based in Brazil. Fucking A, look at you, man, fucking giving jobs to non-Americans. Well done. <laughs> I employ some Americans as well. Um, so what, this is, compiles how many issues? 
This has six issues inside of six it. Six issues. All right. So the winning uh, folks who uh, JC asked, their band fan asked their question, going to get two 40X tickets, and they're going to get the Immortal Era trade paperback. Is this available in comic book stores around the world? There are many comic book stores that have it, mostly around Los Angeles. Better be a few in fucking Brazil. I'll tell you that right yeah. now. It's a few in Brazil. Good. We're, and right now, we're gonna about to launch a Kickstarter next month for issue eight. Fucking A, man. Good Give rest. it up for him. He's making his dreams come true. Well done, Ed. Thank you, my friend. Well, first we'll do this, and then we'll do this. Thank you. Fucking out. Oh, look at that shit, man. Ed's better than us, making his own books. I had to turn to Dark Horse to make a comic book and shit. Well done. All right, Banff, man, you pick out some questions? All right, I do. I didn't realize that we were all drinking tonight, so I picked some sentimental ones, so maybe we'll... Oh, my God, don't make me fucking cry. Yeah, we're going to wind up crying and shit. What? The Internet's going to come for me whenever I cry. They're like, you fucking cuck. First question, uh, Ruth Ramirez. Come on, Ruth. Get up here, Ruth! What you, what you, what you, what you got? Assume the position, Ruth, and ask us your fucking question. Okay, well, first of all, it's my first time here. Hi. Into the I'm microphone. If you're first time here, I'll make coach here. you. I'm asking on behalf of my boyfriend because we're like, when of us is going to get it? What's um, your boyfriend's name? Matthew. Give it hey, up Matthew. for fucking Matthew, it's his man. Yeah, look at that shit. It's his birthday today, so. Oh, happy yeah. birthday, Matthew. Happy birthday, Matthew. Give it up for Matthew. It's his birthday. You um, know that motherfucker getting blown tonight. Well done. He's already wearing a tiara. Yeah, he is already in the tiara. All right, Ruth, use your mouth for something else. <laughs> What's something that you've picked up from the younger generation that's helped you, helped your growth as a creator? Also, what's a piece of advice that you've seen be universal and that it's worked for you and it's working for younger creators? All right, we'll do it. It's, it's a two-parter, and I'm it's drunk. Cool. So do it again. <laughs> What's the first part? The third part. Let's what what have we picked up from the younger generation? What have we picked up from the younger generation? Fair enough. And then the second part? Uh, what's a piece of advice that you've seen that's worked for you, but also for younger creators? For other creators. What's a piece of advice that I've, that's worked for me and other creators? All right. Fuck it. What have we know. learned? And what are we passing on? Can we? Let's just do one. That's so many. <laughs> There's only two. Yeah, all right. You go first, and I'll <laughs> copy you. What have I learned from the younger generation? Yeah. Drink blue milk. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Fucking A. You're not kidding about that. Yeah. Like stretch. <laughs> like lim limber up a little bit. Uh, no, I mean, I think that it's, it's, the, it's the job of a younger generation to remind the older generation to take chances, you know, because I think the older you get, the less likely or inclined you are to do a new thing, because you've been doing an old thing for a long time, you've gotten good at a thing, and so you kind of lean back on experience, you lean back on, on, on time, you lean back on, on the miles that you've driven, but kids are not afraid, you know, like, kids will jump off fucking cliffs, kids will do the dumbest shit, because they think they're invincible, even though they're not, really, and even creatively, they don't know enough not to do the dumb things, and that's how they learn to be their own person. And so I think the longer you do any business, the longer you chase any creative thing, it's remembering to take chances, remembering to walk off the cliff, remembering that it's not the end of the world if you fuck up. In fact, you'll probably find your way to the best thing as long as you're willing to fuck up a little bit. So I think it's that the fearlessness of youth is a thing that, that an older generation can hold on to and take some spirit from. Um, in terms of advice that I have been given that I think applies and I do pass on when I can, it's um, do the work. It's expect nothing, know your worth, be humble, but let motherfuckers know. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's... I saw that on a t-shirt once. Yeah, I put that out on a t-shirt one time. But it's, it's just like you're not going to get it because you think you should have it. You know, you have to earn it, so do the work. If you want to be a writer, write. If you want to be an artist, draw. If you want to be a photographer, shoot. Do the thing. And then if you can continue to do the thing, you'll get good at it, you'll get your 10,000 hours in, then you'll be a professional at it. And if you can put in that time, if you can do that work when nobody is watching, when somebody's ready to look, you'll be ready.
I haven't learned anything from the young generation, man. I just, I made, the last movie I made was Clerks fucking three. So, <laughs> I can't think of anything that I've learned from young people. You know, my kid, well, I don't, I want to like credit my kid with like, something, but. <laughs> <laughs> Proud but, Papa. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I, I, don't, I think I'm usually kind of telling her stuff and whatnot. Um, yeah, no, I like his answer. Let's stick with his. <laughs> Real quick, though, uh, I, I went to go see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood at the New Bev uh, recently, and I, rem I saw Harley, and I remember your story about how uh, when she didn't think she would get the part, she wrote out a character thing for Tarantino, and that's what basically helped get her the roles, so I don't know, maybe if you can grab something from that, or if you did grab something from that. There you go. Obviously she got it for you. Yeah, he remembers something about my kid I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. My kid fucking did the work, whatever the fuck. But, uh... <laughs> oh, it's a blue milk come down. Like, she's a good kid. Um, yeah, whatever the fuck, she did it. She got I'm trying to think, I'm trying, I don't know if I should tell this story, because I don't want to, like, embarrass her and shit, but there's a... All right, fuck it. Um, <laughs> this is what I learned from my kid. My, uh, so the next movie we're making, the 430 movie, is uh, kind of based on my youth. Um, and the main character is kind of based on me. In the same way that Dante was kind of based on me in, in Clerks. But Dante, and most of the movies I make, take place firmly ensconced in the 90s forward. Uh, the next movie we're making, the 430 movie, takes place in 1986, so I go further back to an era of my life um, that was different and shit. And so, uh, Austin Zager, who was in Clerks 3, he played Blockchain Coltrane. Um, Harley, he was in when we did the Sun and Lockdown thing for TBS on the series, what was it called? Uh, Celebrity Show Off. Um, he played the main character and stuff. So I love Austin, and I was like, hey man, let's, why don't you play the main character in 430 movie? So essentially he's playing a young version of me. And since he's dating Harley, I was like, oh shit, you should play the girl that he's in love with and whatnot. And so you be in the flick as, uh, he's playing a character named Brian David, who was, that was the original name that my parents wanted to give me. And then uh, some kid was born in this hospital like two days before me who was also named Brian David. And my mom had to pivot and she went with Kevin Patrick instead. And my grandmother was like, who the fuck's Kevin Patrick? The mailman? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Because everyone in our family's named after some fucker who came before them. Like, my brother's named after my dad. My brother recently said, my God, I'm so drunk. My brother recently <laughs> said, now I'm going deep cuts. We were, my mom was in the hospital for like 11 weeks and shit. My mom almost died. She recovered. She's home. She's doing well and shit. So, yeah. So my brother, you know, when my mom was like at her worst and when the doctor was like, you might need to look into hospice care, you know, I, was, I did the fucking moment where I was like, oh my God, I haven't been as good a son as I should have been. And like, you know, I said, my brother lives down in Florida, like right across the street from my mom. I was like, you're the best son, and like, I wish I'd been more like you all this time as I've spent the last 30 years with my head up my own ass and stuff like that. And my brother was like, look, let's be honest, mom loves you best, almost like the Smothers Brothers and shit. <laughs> um, he goes, mom loves you best. I said, that's not true. He goes, no, that is fucking patently true. Number one, you remind her of dad. And that like really fucking touched me and stuff. I was like, oh my God, you're right, I do. And he goes, uh, number two, um, you have afforded her the ability to do things she never would have done in this lifetime had you not become Kevin Smith and whatnot. Because my mother, as much as I love being Kevin Smith, my mother loves being the mother of Kevin Smith. <laughs> if you've ever gone to like one of my events and she's there, she fucking like fucking soaks that up. She's like, you know I fucking pushed him out of my pussy, right? Like. <laughs> That's my boy and shit. So she loves that shit. And also just whatever, like, I, the job has afforded me the opportunity to afford her things that she never would have done in this lifetime and shit. So he's like, you got that. But he said, but most importantly, 
you're the only one she got to name. It's like, he's, my brother is named after my dad and after my, some uncles and shit. My sister is named after my aunt, but I was named after nobody. There ain't no Kevins in my family, no Patricks whatsoever. And my mom picked that fucking name when she had to pivot and shit. So he's like, so she loves you for that. You're very much hers because she got to fucking, you're her creation from the jump. And the fact that you went on to become you and shit just reflects so well on her and she loves that shit. So I was like, you're right, I am the favorite. <laughs> I am the goodest boy. <laughs> My brother's watching the show going, what a dick. <laughs> um, so anyway, so the character is named Brian David because this is his alternate version of me. Like, this is what would have happened if I didn't be me and stuff like that. So Austin's playing this character, Brian David. And then, you know, there's a girl that he likes and her name is Melody Barnegat and stuff. And so I said to Harley, I was like, well, you play... Melody, because like you're fucking dating Austin, and that makes sense, and like you guys acting together, that'll be cute and shit. And then recently, or recently, like fucking two days ago, my kid was like, "Look, I just this is the hardest decision I ever had to make, but I don't think I should play that part." And I was like, "Why?" And she was like, "Because I think it'll be weird if I play the girl that you fall in love with." <laughs> And I hadn't thought of it like that. You know, I just thought of it as like, oh, you're one of my favorite actors and shit like that. But instead, she saw it a little deeper and I was like, oh, I guess you're right. So I guess the next generation thinks about shit more than, than I do. <laughs> or at least she does or something. So there, yeah, there's a Harley story for you. I'm gonna get yelled at when I get home. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you are. <laughs> She'll be in the movie, but she won't be that part. Give it up for her. She won a fucking book and tickets. Well done. Can I, can, can I play the girl that Austin falls in love with? Yeah, why don't you do it and shit and yeah. drag? That'd be amazing. Hey. We've been doing casting, and like, you know, I don't know. Normally when I write a thing, I just write it for people I know, right? That's why I always see the same fucking people and shit that I do. Um, and we've been casting the fuck out of this next thing. And I got some cool people whose work I love that I'm going to get to work with for the first time. But there's kids in it. Like, mm. when I say kids, I mean, like, youngsters and shit. Like, people who are in their 20s but playing in their teens and stuff. Like, fucking Beverly Hills 90210 style. I'm 43 years old. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we, um, you know, uh, like, had to go through this something I haven't done since, really, since Mallrats where Amy Ryan is our casting, uh, is it Amy Ryan? Well, Amy, yeah, I think it's Amy Ryan, is our casting director. And she has been sending me tapes, self-tapes of people auditioning for the movie. And it's people I've never seen before, a whole young crop of fucking actors. And it's crazy, because again, I haven't done this shit since Mallrats. Mallrats was the last time where somebody sent in or what they didn't send in, I sat down with all of young Hollywood. And when we were casting Mallrats, it was people like fucking, like, uh, who's the fucking, well, Ben Affleck. Obviously the people who were cast in Mallrats, but who are the people that didn't get cast? Motherfucking, uh, what's her fuck? Uh, you know, <laughs> she was in. From the Pennsylvania, what's her fuck? Yeah, <laughs> you know, the famous what's her fuck. You know, Sweet Home Alabama. She, Reese, 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 Reese Witherspoon. Witherspoon, yeah. She was one fucking, you know, fucking, there's a bunch of famous, people who are super famous now, who came in to audition for Mallrats. She, did she come in? No. Bradley Pitford? No, he was already fucking famous. I Bradley think. Whitford? <laughs> no. Um, but we saw a lot of young Hollywood who grew up to be old ass Hollywood. Martin shit. Sheen. Martin fucking Sheen. <laughs> But now I'm seeing all of current young Hollywood, um, which is interesting, which is nice. And um, so, so we'll be casting a wide net for that, as, for that part as well. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point. Uh, Over to you, Bam. You man. know what's handy? Kid. Tell me. I'm not in the Screen Actors Guild. Are you not? I'm not. You so know I why? Because? Because you've never given me lines. <laughs> <laughs> is this a long That's game? That's right. You've, how many Kevin Smith pictures have you been in? I've been in two. You've been in two, but you've never had a line. I've never had a line. All right, well, maybe this time we'll give you a line. No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can. We can Taft-Hartley you. 
Taft Hartley is when you bring somebody in who's not in SAG, but you can let them say a thing once, <laughs> and they don't have to join SAG. But the next time they say a thing in a in a thing, then, then they, they, they have, have to have join to do SAG. They're a must join. So yeah. we could Taft Hartley who give you a line. I get one line. Yeah. Ooh, the pressure. Can you handle it? Duck, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you know the line? Uh, over to you, Banff man. Fuck, I'm drunk. <laughs> uh, Tim, Tim Doherty. Give it up for Tim. Motherfucking Tim Doherty. Go, Tim. Tim, motherfucker Doherty. Go, Tim, thank go. You, thank you. Spell that last name. Go ahead. It's D-A-U-G-H-E-R-T-Y. I was literally going to guess that. It's got a little bit of the Irish in it, so yeah, it's Doherty. Yeah, it does. Uh, Dower. Sometimes Dower. spelled with O and a variety of other things. But my question to both of you is, what was something with your, in your line of work that completely surprised you? Just out of the blue, something you weren't expecting, something you learned, or something surprised you about your line of work? It's a good fucking question. Give it up for Tim, man. That's a fucking <laughs> good question. Thank you. Something in my line of work that surprised me. I got a lot of lines of work, man, so let me pick one. Um, let me see. I'll pick directing. What surprised me about directing? Um, here, it didn't, well, all right, this surprised me. One time I was interviewing Martha Coolidge, who directed a, most, she directed a lot of movies, uh, including Real Genius, which is an amazing movie with fucking Val Kilmer. Uh, she directed Rambling Rose with Laura Dern. But the film she directed, which made the biggest impact on my life, is a movie with Nick Cage and Deborah Foreman called Valley Girl. An amazing fucking movie from the uh -huh. 80s. Part of the reason that I live in Los Angeles, man, and now live literally in the Valley, because she romanticized both Hollywood and the Valley. You know, when I was a kid, I lived in Jersey, and all I knew about California, or this area of California, the Southland, if you will, was what I saw in movies and TV, and particularly the Valley was romanticized for me by Valley Girl and by Bad News Bears. Bad News Bears took place in the North Valley and stuff. So Martha Coolidge, to me, one of the greatest fucking directors ever lived. I interviewed Martha Coolidge uh, for a podcast series I was doing years ago at Lincoln Center in New York, and it was called Smooviola. Was when I was deep into podcasting and stuff, long before everyone else jumped in the pool. And so we did a screening of Buckaroo Banzai, and I interviewed fucking Peter Weller, who I recently ran into at another Comic-Con, I think in Dallas. Wonderful fucking guy. That's where I'm from. Yeah, yeah. Um, and John Lithgow was there for that. And then we did uh, Valley Girl, and it was with Freddie Elms, who was the DP, and fucking um, Deborah Foreman, who played Julie, and... Uh, and Martha Coolidge, who directed it. And Martha Coolidge said that the phone stopped ringing for her at a certain point. And that's why she stopped directing. And that wow. blew my fucking mind. I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, I hit a certain age and people stopped calling me. And that fucking terrified the shit out of me. Wow. Where I was like, what do you mean? Like, fucking you hit a certain age and they don't give a fuck anymore? And this is somebody who directed what I consider to be... Those three movies alone, which were back to back to back, man. Fucking she had a run of Valley Girl, Real Genius, and Ramblin' Rose. And Ramblin' Rose, like, I think Amazing Laura Durham was nominated for a fucking Academy Award, maybe, if I remember correctly. At least she was nominated for off Academy Awards, like Critics Best and shit like that. But I think she got nominated for Academy Award, maybe a Golden Globe, whatever the fuck. And I was like, well, what the fuck? You direct those three movies and people stop calling? And she said, yeah. And that fucking scared me, man, where I was like, oh, my God, fucking, they can not call you one day? And then I remembered, like, oh, shit, like, I'm an indie artist. Like, when I started, I didn't start with a studio. I didn't start because somebody was like, we're going to let you fucking direct. I started because I was like, I want to direct. And so from that moment forward, and this is going back 10, maybe 15 years, I made sure that I kept so many irons in the fire that nobody was ever going to not fucking call me. And if they didn't not call me, it wouldn't fucking matter because I can make my own fucking bed. I don't Absolutely. need somebody to be like, we're going to let you direct. I'm like, fuck you. I will let myself fucking direct. Absolutely. Hearing that Martha Coolidge wasn't getting called to direct really fucking changed me as a filmmaker in some way. 
So there, that's the thing Beautiful. I fucking Thank learned. Thank you. <laughs> you? Uh, it, it's hard to pick one as a director because all of it surprised me because the uh, one thing I directed was the first thing that I directed. So it's all like, oh Why shit. Why the fuck is this blue milk empty? <laughs> Loki, let's fucking go. <laughs> More wine. <laughs> Smash. Um, but in, in, in comic books, there's, there's this amazing moment when you write your script and you have the ideas for what that script is. And depending on how descriptive a writer you are in comics, you could be Stan Lee and just be like, hey, Jack, we're going to blow up a building in this one and maybe the fucking, I don't know, the... Uh, it's going to be weird. Somebody's going to have some marital issues, and the kid's going to turn into a puppy. Go. And then everything's a surprise for him. Sure. But if you write your script kind of deeply, you've described characters, you've described places, you've given you know, context and, 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 and contours to it all. But there's always the moment when the artist, when you get pages in from the artist, and suddenly it's real. Yeah. Suddenly what had just been words is now pictures. And there's a moment on the door in the distance when, you know, grabbing a novel that I did a couple... Oh, yeah, it's that one. Uh, a couple years back that I've been working on for a very long time. Put it together for a door in the <laughs> distance. <laughs> um, so I've been working on that book before it was released for about 10 years, maybe longer than that. And I, I guess in describing the main character, I just described the kind of girl she was. Sure. 10 years old, she's precocious, she's adventurous, she's unafraid of anything, but she's sweet at heart. The world loves her. You know, and the, the, she is the light in the darkness for everybody who ever meets her. And that's about it. And so Ariella Cristantina, who's my artist, and I might have told this story before. So Where is she from? Her. She's from Jakarta, Indonesia. And, uh, and so she read the script, and she started giving me sketches for what the characters were. And the first sketches of Adora were of a little black girl. And... That was never in the script. Sure. Some of that is because I guess I had been gaslighting myself for a long time that most of the characters that I were writing began as white people and then I would consciously shift them into black people because sure. that's the world, right? Like as, as a person of color coming to Hollywood, coming to comics, coming to media, the images you are bombarded with are not of yourself. So you somewhat subconsciously began to refocus who gets to be the heroes of your story. They rarely look like you. And so I didn't even put it on the page that she was a black girl. It wasn't in my head that yeah. it was. And Ariella's drawings were all of her with like curly long hair and, and brown skin and wide eyes. And I was like, How, why? I never asked for this. She's like, well, it's based on your kid. Of course she's black. I was like, fuck, that was the biggest <laughs> surprise I'd ever gotten because I'd never asked for it. Yeah. I didn't know enough to ask for it. But she penetrated all of the levels. I guess maybe growing up in Indonesia, she's not as bombarded with America as Americans Absolutely. are and mm. so she doesn't have those layers and levels of, of unlearning to do and she saw it immediately for what it should have been Beautiful. and delivered unto me what I always should have asked for Awesome. and so that was the biggest surprise I think I'd ever had in a thing that I helped to make thank you thank you what a fucking answer give it up for that <laughs> thank you Mark Congratulations, man. You Absolutely. win some tickets and the fucking book, The Immortal Era. Well done. Excellent question. Give it up Good for him, question. ladies and gentlemen. I one actually, more question, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead, Ben. I have an answer for that one, too, which was pre-Scum and Villainy. Yeah. I thought that people went out to bars to get drunk or to... And I was like... I do we? now, too, as well. <laughs> but... Owning the bar and spending time here is what you realize is it's the same reason like people go to Comic-Con and the same reason uh, and it's like not celebrity autographs or this thing or that thing. It's community and that really surprised me going from like working behind the camera and film to like being in a space with people mm -hmm. is that people come here for community. They come to Fat Man Beyond for community. They come to Scum and Villainy for community. They come to their local bar for community. Um, it's like a better version of church. Fucking A, yes. And it, to be fair, it costs about as much as church. 
That's true, but the drinks are stronger. Yeah, way stronger and shit. And they don't guilt you out with like, this is the blood of Christ. They're like, this is a blue milk. And you're like, fuck yeah, I'll take nine. Here it's like, this is the blood of dragons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you could do the blood of Buddy Christ. That's true. That's why I come, though. I, come to the, I don't come to the scum and villain and get drunk, although I will from now on. <laughs> uh, I come for the community. I love when we come do this show. You know, I like when we do it at home and shit because it's convenient. But I like coming here because it's a sense of community. I'm surrounded by a bunch of like-minded individuals that if they drop the fucking bomb today, which is something we don't think about anymore, but in the 80s, that's all we thought about and shit. Chris Nolan thinks about it a lot. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. He's counting on it and shit. Um, I'm surrounded by a bunch of like-minded individuals, a bunch of people that feel and, and think like me. And that way is not exclusionary, it's inclusionary. You know, this place is all about fucking acceptance and, like, we all fucking adhere to the same things, man. Like, we all believe in a bunch of bullshit ain't real which is kind of like the Catholic Church. And, uh, and I don't know, I fucking, I really respect that. I, I like to imagine the bomb dropping and we're all stuck in here and we're like, hey, does anybody know how to make like a solar panel? No, but I know a lot about Blake 7. <laughs> does that help? Deep cuts, well done. <laughs> all right, last question of the evening. Is uh, from Juan Carlos Alcantar. Get up here, Juan! Juan! Number Juan! Who's on your shirt? Uh, Luis Bunuel. Fucking A. Thanks. Well, my question to you Quit that is... mic right in your fucking oh, face sorry. like you're sucking a dick. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so my question to you guys both is, uh, first of all, I'm a big fan of you guys, so I just want to let you guys know. Thank you. I came you, all the way to San Diego to just come and see the show. I mean, you could have stayed. We'll be there in a week. <laughs> 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 Well, my, my question is to both of you is, uh, you know, let's say, what if Andy Muschietti came, in, came up to you guys to approach you Flash guys? Flash director Andy Muschietti. Flash director. And he said, you know what, guys? I heard your podcast. I'm a big, you know, I'm in trouble. I don't know what to do. I need you guys to help me uh, re recreate this universe that I don't know what to do with. What would you guys do differently with the Batman and, Batman and Robin and the Brave and the Bold? Because he's making the Brave and Bold next, reportedly. Um, what would I do? I mean, honestly, like I'm telling you, I watched The Flash four times. I thought that dude did a great job. I loved it. I saw it at night. It's, it's <laughs> wonderful. I know a lot of people are shitting on it and shit, but I enjoyed the fun, including this fucking guy. Who? <laughs> um, what? But anybody no. who brings back Michael Keaton as Batman and lets him be the Michael Keaton Batman, he didn't change him, he didn't direct him to be anything else. My fucker literally at one point was like, how much do you weigh? Like, fucking took me right back to 1989. That dude needs no advice from me. Uh, the one thing I would say, though, is like, you might want to stay away from Ezra Miller. Uh, <laughs> seems to have hurt his cause a little bit. But other than that, he seems like a really good director. Like, The Flash is a fucking entertaining movie. I know the internet shit on the CG, but... I don't need my CG to look fucking convincing. Like, it's a story about a boy who solves all his problems by running super fucking fast. So you're already taking a leap anyway and stuff. So I wouldn't tell him to, like, do better CG. Unless it's like you want to fucking avoid getting shit on by the internet, maybe get some better CG. But not for me. I, I, I don't know. I think the dude's a hell of a director. He needs no advice from me. You? All right, nine pieces of advice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will, I'll, say, I'll say two things. One is, A, we don't need an origin story for anybody. So stop. Yeah, fucking, you better not show us pearls ever again. No. I don't want to see no fucking pearls falling and shit. Like, I get it, his mom got killed. Move we, on. We know. Um, but to drill down on the father-son relationship. Like, I think that when these movies work, they work because they're emotional. They work because they, they're about characters going through a thing in their lives who happen to be superheroes, not necessarily just superheroes. Um, and then, like, fuck it, you don't need an expensive Batman movie. You never have needed an expensive Batman movie. No. So dude in the fucking costume solves crimes. Yeah. He drives a car that maybe you have to build, maybe you don't. Yeah. Like you that, don't need a third act with a flood, I'll tell you that much. No. No. And you never have. No. Like it's you could make a forty million dollar Batman movie. Fucking 
preach, bitch. You know, Go. Say that shit again. <laughs> there is, I mean, John Wick is the best Batman movie we've ever had. Yeah. Just fucking do that shit. You know, and so like... Do Reacher. He's Batman without a Reacher. mask. Yeah. Like, like we've, we've, we understand now what Batman is. We don't need spectacle with Batman. We need commitment. We need will. And those things on screen are not expensive. Um, and so that way you don't have to make $300 million to get to make your next one. You just got to make a bit to make a bit more. And so like lower your, like slow your roll on just spending the, the king's Spend ransom. less. Spend That's less, make more. That's a good piece of advice right there, man. Like, Flash costs what? 200 plus? 250 yeah. some odd million dollars. And that's why they're like, it's never going to make its money back. It's one of the most fucking uh, money losing superhero movies ever made. You can make Brave and Bold for fucking 50 million and, fu and clean the fuck up at the box office by making it for less. Yeah. That's an excellent piece like of advice. Like, you won't make more money because it's more expensive. Exactly. Because it's fucking Batman. We'll go anyway. <laughs> oh my lord, my lord <laughs> just <Lord>. fucking truth <laughs> um, that's it that's all I got remember it's a father son story and it's a fucked up family and just lean into that and save some money also don't do Damian Wayne well I mean I think no but they're doing why not because I want to see Dick Grayson I want to see Dick Grayson on the big screen done right with all due respect to Chris O'Donnell, I don't want a 90-year-old fucking Bruce, you know, Dick Grayson. Fucking. I got your credit card, Bruce. Give me a kid. Like, fucking, what's his name? Fucking Grant Morrison, one of our best and brightest. On an early-ass episode, I've talked about this before, on an early-ass episode of uh, Fat Man on Batman, I was interviewing him, and I was making some jokes, some fucking low-hanging fruit jokes about fucking Batman and Robin and their fucking relationship. And he fucking put me on on pause, man. He put me on notice. He was like, don't do that. He's like, don't. He's going, the Batman and Robin relationship is so beautiful. He's like, because it's a story of the man who looks at the boy to, and sees the childhood that he never had and the boy that looks at the man and sees the person he wants to be. So it's like, give me that, man. Give me, give me that. Give me a young boy Robin and shit. And which sounds dirtier than I meant it. <laughs> sounds dirty coming out, but I don't mean it like that, man. I mean, that sounds dirty going in. Yeah, fucking. <laughs> give me that pure relationship right there. Think about it. every Dick Grayson we've ever seen. Like fucking Burt Ward was like 80 years old and shit, and fucking Chris O'Donnell was 90 years old. Give us a kid, a motherfucking kid who watches his parents fucking die. And that's what Bruce sees in him. He's like, I saw my parents die when I was that age. Here's my chance to fucking minister to this child. I've been where he is and shit. So I hope Brave and Bold is a kid, Robin. Because that's what you need. Like, fucking think about it. Like, look at this room. Do you see any kids here? Yes, it's a bar. <laughs> but <laughs> but I mean, like, if you do, take them home. <laughs> yeah, get it's them out of here. Do you know what the your fuck? children are? But like kids, like I got into this shit when I was a child. You know what I'm saying? Like, I watched fucking Batman and Robin, or Batman, you know, Bruce, uh, Adam West Batman, when I was a fucking kid and shit. And the, the, in the comics, they included Robin, the character find of 19, whatever the fuck, because it was meant to speak to a child who was reading a comic book and reading stories about grown-ups doing these astounding feats. And here was somebody that mirrored them, who they were, a youngster and shit. Like, I get it. We're all old and we're into this shit and it keeps us eternally young, but like, we gotta feed the next generation, man. And the next generation is fucking young. So make that Robin a little fucking boy, man. Nine, 10, 11 years old. I know there's all sorts of weird fucking shit about like, why would you bring a child into this fucking world? But the only one who gets away with that is the boy who, the man who was a child when the same shit happened to him. Bruce Wayne understands why you would fucking okay a child to duck bullets and shit like that. Makes sense to me. So make him a kid. That would be my advice to Andy Muschietti. I'm make sure Robin a kid. Tom Holland has a younger brother, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Just get some young fucking kid. You man. know who did it real well? Tell me. Indiana Jones in short round? Fucking yes. Absolutely right, man. And where was he in the recent fucking... <laughs> Don't get me started, but fucking yes. 
<laughs> yeah, Indiana Jones and Short Round did that fucking right. You know what? Who else did it right? Uh, fucking uh, Hit Girl, like in uh, Kick Ass. Mm-hmm. It was fucking fantastic, you know, adult child relationship and training a kid to be a fucking, you know, superhero essentially. I mean, she was kind of badass though. Mm. Um, but still, Robin should be fucking badass. This is a ch- This is literally what did they call him in fucking in uh, Dark Knight Returns? Like fucking, you know, Bruce says like they called you the boy, not the boy wonder, but the boy target or whatever the fuck. Like fucking the idea that this little kid is somebody that every fucking like gangster and supervillain is like, oh my god, I'm gonna fucking kill this child. That's so fucked up. <laughs> Do that. You know what I'm saying? Like fucking, because what kid couldn't handle that nowadays? Maybe like in the 70s and the 80s, it'd be tough to handle, but kids look at porn nowadays on fucking Pornhub. You can see a fucking child put in danger and shit and be like, yes, and Bruce Wayne should be. No, you're fucking, Andrew, stop Andrew, it, no. Cut, cut I'm the gonna, scene. Now I'm cut being the honest. Feet. Cut the feet. <laughs> You can fucking see, like, Bruce Wayne should be a little fucked up, right? Like, because he was fucked up himself as a child who watched his parents get killed. So he should be an adult who's like, you know what? This kid can handle it because I was that kid once, and I fucking handled Look at me. I'm fucking alive and shit like that. So put this 10-year-old in danger. <laughs> Show him the right porn. Send him out to fight. But it's also good motivation for Batman, right? I mean, how many times have we seen a Batman movie where he's like, still angry about that shit that happened when I was a kid? Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if his motivation was like, I'm not going to let you kill this kid. I'm not going to let you hurt this kid. Uh, Fuck it. That's beautiful right there. Let JC write that next movie. (laughs) You're absolutely right. It's like, hey, you know what would be awesome for you, kid? I don't know, trauma therapy? <laughs> like, maybe let's get you the help I never got because Alfred's a really bad caretaker. And, and don't do that. That would be my advice, too. Don't fucking apply current psychology to characters that were created 50, 60 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a reason these characters have transcended fucking time. Don't be ironic and be like, this motherfucking relationship is codependent. Just make it as simple as like, this fucking man was a boy once, and he watched his parents get killed, and it fucked him up for life. And fucking so, he got his hands on another child, and he's gonna fuck him up too, because he doesn't want to be lonely. I guess when you say it out loud, it is kind of fucked up. Well, but do that, man. Don't fucking make it make sense. This shit should not make sense. Like at the end of the day, you got a zillion fucking programs about true crime and shit that makes sense. This is fantasy. It's about a motherfucker who puts on a mask and a cape to fight fucking crazy ass villains and shit. Don't give me reality. That's what bugs me about the Matt Reeves thing, man, where it's like, I'm going to make this shit as real as possible. Don't. Don't make it real. Then it fucking falls apart. If you want to make it real, make it Reacher. That's better and shit. If you're going to make it Batman... Make it unrealistic, because this shit would never happen in the real world. I know a lot of people like Batman's more real- realistic than Superman. They're both fucking stupid, man. Like, this, none of this shit makes sense. Kevin so, Smith, they're both stupid. None of it makes sense. <laughs> Screen Rant has their next fucking headline and shit. I called them out recently on Twitter. I fucking listed a bunch of these motherfuckers that... Like, fucking take articles from this show. Everyone liberally takes from this fucking show. So I was like, look, man, in a world where you take fucking, like, shit I say and turn it into fucking articles, clickbait, do me a favor, advertise my shows at Smod Castle. <laughs> and only one of them did, man. Superhero yeah. hype. Give it up for superhero hype. They literally were like... They, they advertised this show. They were like, fucking Kevin and Mark are doing Fat Man Beyond, and we sold this show out and shit. And I think that had something to do with superhero hype. The rest of them, including fucking Screen Rant, didn't fucking do a goddamn thing. So I'm just drunk enough to say it. Fucking Screen Rant, get with the program. If you're going to take from me, you got to give back. Give it up for fucking giving back. Thank you, Juan. Other question. Excellent question. Give it up for Juan, man. 
Well done. Um, are we finished? That's a show. <laughs> <laughs> Have we finished setting my career on fire? Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> I don't give a shit anymore. I got blue milk. That's all I need. This episode's brought to you by Blue Milk, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, fucking, hey, thank God we didn't have a sponsor. They'd be like, we're quitting this show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're ever in Hollywood and you come to Scum and Villainy Cantina, make sure you get yourself some blue fucking milk. I had, chase it with water. I had at least five of these, and I feel fucking amazing, man. Uh, did y'all have a good time tonight? I'm fucking, honestly, when we came tonight, I was like, I don't really have anything to talk about. And boy, we fucking, how long have we been doing this shit? We did a lot of singing. Two and, and it's not really hours. singing when you do a score, right? It's like, what do you oh, yeah. call that shit? I don't know. I don't know what carry on. Yelling. <laughs> yeah. I did a lot of yelling life. tonight. I was like, fucking screen rant. How long have we been doing it? Two and a half. Two and a half checks out. hours, man. Yeah, checks like We got out. no news. We got no upfront. We saw a show we didn't really care for two and a half hours later. That's the miracle of Fat Man Beyond, man. Fucking, we can spin straw into gold. If that's what we're calling it, that's what we did. It's truly that. Um, I know I just said it, but I'm going to do it again. Did y'all have a good time tonight? <laughs> As you can tell, I cannot self-validate. I need your validation to make me feel good. Um, we can't have a single fucking show if we didn't have a place to do it. Give it up for JC and the Scum and Villainy Cantina. Bath Man! And give it up to the most thoughtful motherfucker in this business, the only fucking writer behind this bar, Mark fucking Bernardin! And that, ladies and gentlemen at home and here at the Scum and Villainy Cantina in Hollywood, on Hollywood Boulevard, is Fat Man Beyond for this week. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Mark Bernard. I was going to say babble the fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say babble the fuck off. Wrong show. Tune in next time. Same fat time. Same fat channel. Uh, Smodcast.com or YouTube.com slash Kevin Smith. Jeff's Kiss, motherfuckers. Mwah! Mwah! This is the cat. Greetings, everybody, and welcome. As a 10 year anniversary, ladies and gentlemen, and this is what happens when Jay and Silent Bob get old. I'm Kevin Smith. Cheers, everyone!